One for Kids online store. Check out our range of fun and educational Zaki and Friends products your children will love. There's the world famous Zaki talking and singing toy, Zaki's Arabic pack, cloud pillow, plush toys, and more. For Ramadan, we have the new Ramadan show bag and the Ramadan educational pack. Our products are designed to keep your children entertained while learning about their deen. Purchase online now. Shop.oneforkids.net. We thank you for your support. Whether it's someone with the phone or mo, his school is closing, don't just know that Zaki will be there. If the nuts fall on their heads or the hungry birds unfit, just know that Zaki will be there. In Zaki's adventures, always caring for someone else. In Zaki's adventures, he's so helpful in every way. He's so loving and caring, always helping those in need. Cause he's so loving so and caring, always helping those in need. In Zaki's adventures. Wow, an elephant. And there's a fluffy bunny. And look, a... Uh... Hi, Zaki. Hey, buddy. What are you up to? Hi, Tima. Hi, Tufa. I'm just looking at the fun shapes in the clouds whilst waiting for the mail to arrive. Today, I'm expecting a special letter from my pen pal, Maui the polar bear. It's here. It's here. All right. What's wrong, Zaki? Huh. My friend Moe's in trouble. His snowboarding school up at Snowcap Mountain is in danger of closing. Due to the effects of global warming, if it doesn't snow soon, he'll have to close the school and move to a colder area. What's global warming? Um, how can I put this simply? Okay, when we become sick, we get a fever, which makes our body temperature rise. Understand? Yes. Now, the excess burning of things like coal, gas and oil and the chopping down of trees, which makes our oxygen, cause a build-up of carbon dioxide or CO2 pollution. Ooh. This pollution makes the planet Earth sick with fever. This fever causes Earth's temperature to rise, so areas like Snowcap Mountain begin to melt. So that's pretty much what global warming is. Wow, that's a big problem. How do you fix something like that? I'm not sure. I think the best person to tell us would be Moe. Hey, that gives me an idea. Hey kids, it's important to help others in need, right? So why don't we take a trip to Snowcap Mountain and see if we can find a way to keep Moe's school from closing. And while we're there, Moe can teach us how we can reduce the effects of global warming. Woohoo! Road trip! Hey everybody, what a beautiful day. The sun is shining and the water's inviting. What do you say we go out and play? Sorry Kazwa, my friend's in trouble and I'm going to help him out. So are we! Well I want to help too. Where are we going? Snowcap Mountain, so you'd better rug up. Did you say uh, snow? Well, according to the map, the quickest way to Snowcap Canyon is to go north through um, 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 Shadow Valley. Shadow Valley? Shadow Valley. Shadow Valley. Um, 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 um. Shadow Valley. Ooh, 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 ooh. The creepiest place you would ever see. But don't worry. If we stick together, 
we'll be fine. You drop that nut on my head. I didn't know such thing, buddy. Well, there's no one else around here. Must have been the tree that did it. Must have been the tree that did it. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What the? What the? Hey, hey, calm down, guys. What's the problem? This goofball dropped a nut on my head. I did not. Look, guys. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's your culprit. The nuts are coming from the tree above. That's impossible. When we moved here, there were no nuts in that tree. Yeah. That may be true, but as this particular tree matures, it begins to grow nuts. As the season changes, the nuts ripen and fall off. It's all part of the cycle of life. Sorry, mate. That's all right. So what are we going to do now? We can't stay under this tree. It's too dangerous. Come on, Zacky. You better get a move on. I'd like to get through Shadow Valley as soon as possible. I'd like to as well, Tufa. But these little guys are in need. And it's important to help everyone in need. From the biggest to the smallest. Zacky says helping others is a great act of kindness. What seems to be the problem? Oh, the nuts from the tree above are falling down on top of us. Why don't you move the nest out of harm's way? Our queen is just about to lay her eggs, so moving her is out of the question. And we've just moved here due to floods in the nearby ravine. <laughs> Ooh. I think I've got an idea. I'll need some vines, lots of leaves and some tree sap. Okay, what we need to do is make a net that will protect the nest from the falling nuts. Thank you for your help. If you're ever in need, don't hesitate to ask. What about all those nuts? Where will they go? Hmm, I've got an idea. Back in a few minutes. Oh, well, I saw it first. I saw it first. I saw it first. I saw it first. Ah! ah. Oh, oh, hi, hi Zacky. <laughs> hi, guys. Fighting over nuts again? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, 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 you know how nutty we get about nuts. <laughs> hmm. Now you know how much I care about you two guys. Yeah, we know. You care about everyone, Zacky. Okay, guys, you know that overeating can make you sick and makes it difficult to stay fit. Diet starts tomorrow. <laughs> yep, tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, guys, I need a favour. Anything, Anything for, for you, you Zaki? Zaki. <laughs> well, I'm not really sure who's getting a favour here. Come with me. Zaki says... Eat healthy, stay active, and feel great. Green veggies are best. Yummy! Ooh. OK, 
Okay, guys, they're all yours. There it goes to diet. <laughs> You're not joking. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Our ant friends here will need these nuts removed occasionally. And as you guys are, as you say, nutty about nuts, I figured it would be perfect for everyone. Now, as you guys will be starting your diet tomorrow, you'll be able to store these away for the winter. <laughs> okay, okay Zaki, Zaki, we, we, we will. will. <laughs> Bye, Zaki. See you, Tima. Bye, Zaki. <laughs> Bye, Zaki. See you, Tima. Bye, Tima. Zaki says, when you eat, you should fill your stomach with one third food, one third water, and leave the last third for air. Shadow Valley. Ooh, 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 ooh. The creepiest place you would ever see. Eyes gazing at you from every tree. Shadow Valley, um, 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 um. Shadow Valley, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, um, Shadow Valley. Ooh, ooh, Shadow Valley. Kazwa, you're awfully quiet back there. Huh? Where's Kazwa? I thought he was right behind me. Kazwa! Kazwa! Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm, 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 mm. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Kazwa, I think you better get out of there. Shadow Valley, um, 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 um. Shadow Valley. What? Oh no. Zaki says, learning to swim is not only a great way to stay fit, but also important for your safety. Hey Kaz, grab onto this! Did you eat? Where are you going? To ask the ants for help. <laughs> How can they help? They're too small. Guys, I need your help. to that tree near the ravine. Come on guys, chew like you've never chewed before.
Watch out! I spy with my little eye, something beginning with... I. Iceberg! No, try again. Ice cream? No, try again. Iceberg! No, try again. No, iceberg! <laughs> Hey, look everyone, according to that sign, we're almost there. I try not to explore and never make it cease. And always from the borders, that's what Zaki says. Be nice to my father, that's what Zaki says. Better to my mother, that's what Zaki says. Respect to my elders, that's what Zaki says. And good to my neighbors, that's what Zaki says. I never lose my temper, cause that's what Zaki says. Smiling is much better, that's what Zaki says. Zaki loves to teach us. Starting to get cold. Let's rug up and head for Snow Cap Mountain. That's how Zaki says, littering is not cool. We must always place our waste in the bins and keep our earth and oceans clean. Hi, um, I was wondering if you know Moe, who lives at uh, Snowcap Mountain? Pabu dear, isn't he the polar bear who runs that snowboarding school? That's right, Penny darling. Snowcap Mountain is over in that direction. Just follow the trail of slushy snow. A pity. It used to be such a nice place. Well, the melting snow is a result of global warming caused by pollution. Pollution caused by others, maybe. That's nonsense. There's no such thing as global warming. Yes, and what doesn't affect us does not concern us. Come on, Penny, let's go. But global warming affects everything and everyone. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. 
Well, a lot of people don't believe global warming is happening, even though we can see the signs. Well, as long as the right people know it's happening, then we can do something to set it right. My green earth, my blue skies, my clear ocean stretch out so wide. My clean air, my free birds, yellow flowers, <laughs> bees love to sun. Hi, my name's Zaki, and these are my friends. Is everything all right? Our little Wally is missing. It seems in the night, when we were sleeping, the ice melted and broke away with our baby on board. When we woke, our Wally was missing, and he hasn't learned to swim yet. Tima, too far. Let's get a bird's eye view of the area and see if we can spot him. Roll your sleeves up and get yourself ready cause it's time to help a What's friend that? a friend in need don't get caught up and turn the other way cause it's time to help a friend, a friend quickly Zaki before he goes over the waterfall <laughs> Yes, thank you, Zaki. And you are? I'm Maui. Hiya, pen pal. Hiya, pen pal. And these are my friends, Kazwa, Tima, and Tufa. Hi, Hi Maui. Maui. Why don't we go to my place and get to know each other over some yummy hot chocolate? Mmm, that sounds like a great idea. Goodbye. Bye, Maui. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Bye, Zaki. See you later. As you can see, pockets of grass and rock are starting to poke up through the snow, which is quite unusual for a place such as Snow Cap Mountain. <laughs> Thanks for coming all the way out here to help out. I really appreciate it. That's okay. I just hope we'll be able to help. Yeah, global warming sounds like such a big problem. How on earth are we going to fix that? Yeah, Maui, how can we make a difference? That's easy. 
If we just follow these simple instructions, we can dramatically decrease the amount of carbon dioxide pollution in the air, which causes global warming. Really? Allow me to help out. Thanks, Tima. Well, let's start with the humble light bulb. By changing just one of these bulbs to a fluorescent energy saver light, you can slow down the effects of global warming. Wow! The next thing you can do to save the planet is drive less. The more you walk, ride a bike, or take public transport, like buses and trains, the less carbon dioxide enters our atmosphere. Does riding on a log count? What? <laughs> it's a long story. Please continue. Another thing we can do to slow down the effects of global warming is to recycle more. And recycling is so easy to do. You just need two bins, one for waste and the other for recyclables, such as paper, cans and glass. That's right, Tufa. Now, heating water takes a lot of energy, so by washing your clothes in cold or warm water, you'll use a lot less electricity. And your coloured clothes will last longer. Also, by installing a low-flow shower head, not only do you save on your heating costs, but save on the amount of water you use. Well, we all know how important it is not to waste water anyway, whether it's hot or cold. That's right, Kazwa. Cool. Now, Moe, what's one simple thing that we can all easily do every day to cut down on carbon dioxide pollution, which causes global warming? This one's easy, Zaki. Simply turn off your TV, DVD player, stereo and computer when you're not using them and you'll avoid thousands of CO2 emissions a year from entering the planet's atmosphere. Well, these really are easy to follow, aren't they? That's right, Kaz. And this one's fun. Plant a tree. Did you know a single tree will absorb loads of poisonous carbon dioxide pollution over its lifetime and change it into beautiful, breathable oxygen? That's why it's so important to take care of our forests, for they are known as the lungs of the earth. So there you have it. If we just follow these simple guidelines, we can slow down the effects of global warming and hopefully reverse some of the harmful effects it's been having on our beautiful world. <sighs> What's the matter, Moe? I'm afraid that even if we all change our habits, it still won't be soon enough to keep the school from closing. Let's take a walk and see if we can come up with an idea on how we might save the school. Mmm, it's a shame you can't snowboard on this yummy grass. Guys, I think I've got it. Sorry everyone, but there's just not enough snow around to keep the school open. Huh? Wait, before you give up! Try this out!
Now just remember to press the red button on the board before you hit the grass. Uh, I hope this works, Zaki. Here we go. Thanks everyone for your help! With these new boards, we'll be able to keep the school open! And with your advice, we'll all be able to help reduce the effects of global warming. Now if we can only teach those stubborn penguins! Well it takes time for everyone to get the message. Somehow, I don't think that's going to be a problem. How was your party? Terrible! Disastrous! Why? What happened? The roof melted and collapsed, burying us all in snow. We've spent the last day tunneling our way out. Then we tried to think what could have caused that roof to melt. It was then that we remembered what you'd said earlier about global warming. Yes, we remembered you were looking for your friend Moe on Snowcap Mountain, so we decided to make our way here. Why? Well, we want to know how to prevent this thing from ever happening again. Well, at this rate, Moe, if everyone gets the proper education on pollution prevention, you might get that snow to come back again next season. Well, it looks like our work here is done. You said it, Kaz. Bye, Moe. See ya, pal. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for your help. Well done, sir. Oh, I can spin now. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy, Zaki. Diet starts tomorrow! <laughs> What a big adventure we had! Do you remember the lessons we learnt along the way? I learned that everyone, no matter how big or small, deserves the help of others. And that no one is too small to help. I learned the risks of running off alone, and the danger it can get you in. I learned how important it is knowing how to swim. We also learned how important it is not to ignore what is going on in our world today. That's right, Tima. Dear children, while we were able to help Moe keep his school open, it's great to know that by following Moe's advice, we can all help in keeping our beautiful planet healthy too. Until our next adventure, bye for now. See you later. Can we go swimming now? Oh, Kazwa. Where's a rich someone with the phone or more? school is closing, don't just know that Zaki will be there. My green earth, my blue skies, my clear oceans that stretch out so wide. My clean air, my free birds, the yellow flowers that bees love to search. My green earth, my green earth, my blue skies, my blue skies. Did you ever wonder how it came to be like this? That we can't even breathe without the smoke.
wrong that we see The food that we eat is not the way it should be And the cheese standing tall are far and gone Ice melting down and the sea is rising high We need to look to alternative ways to power our lives Our lives Now is the time for you and I To stand side by side and say this world is mine Oh mine My green earth, my blue skies My clear ocean ship stretch out so wide My clean air, my free birds The yellow flowers that bees left us to search My green Do you remember the new friends from our adventures to Snowcapped Mountain? Well, let's see if you can guess who each character is. Do you know who this is? It's my friends Chomp and Chuck the Ants. And it looks like my nutty friends Harold and Ronald. <laughs> Diet starts tomorrow! <laughs> Boy, do they love to eat nuts. And these are my friends from Snowcap Mountain. Penny and Pabu the penguins. Come on Penny, let's go. And do you remember Wally and his parents the seals? Oh, I can swim now. <laughs> and snowboarding down the mountain, it's my pen pal, Moe the polar bear. Hey kids, it's important to help others in need, right? So why don't we take a trip to Snowcap Mountain and see if we can find a way to keep Moe's school from closing. And while we're there, Moe can teach us how we can reduce the effects of global warming. Woohoo! Road trip! Hey everybody, what a beautiful day. The sun is shining and the water's inviting. What do you say we go out and play? Sorry, Gazwa, my friend's in trouble and I'm going to help him out. So are we! Well, I want to help too. Where are we going? Snowcap Mountain, so you'd better rug up. Did you say s -s snow? Roll your sleeves up and get yourself ready Cause it's time to help a friend, a friend in need. But these little guys are in need and it's important to help everyone in need, from the biggest to the smallest. A friend in need Caring and sharing Helping and forgiving How wonderful qualities to have in you Smiling and greeting Be kind to all the living How wonderful qualities to have in you If someone needs smiling being down and frowning then know that they need you Yes, you Stop what you are doing Go over, say how you doing Cause one day that could be you Yes, you Caring and sharing Helping and forgiving How wonderful qualities to have in you Smiling and greeting Be kind to all the living How wonderful qualities to have in 
on you. Well, let's start with the humble light bulb. By changing just one of these bulbs to a fluorescent energy saver light, you can slow down the effects of global warming. Please continue. Another thing we could do to slow down the effects of global warming is to recycle more. And recycling is so easy to do. You just need two bins, one for waste and the other for recyclables, such as paper, cans and glass. I saw it first. I saw it first. I saw it first. I saw it first. <laughs> Long, long ago, a little boy was born in the kingdom of Babylon. His name was Abraham. He was a very special boy because Allah made his heart and mind clear and gave him wisdom from when he was young. Abraham lived in a time when people worshipped the sun, the moon, stars and idols made from wood and stone. Abraham's father was a sculptor. When Abraham was a young boy, he used to watch while his father carved statues from wood and stone. Abraham would use the statues as toys riding on their backs and sometimes even kicking them. But after a while, he would see the same statues in the temple, with people of the kingdom praying to them. Abraham was confused and asked his father, Why do you take these toys to the temple? His father replied, They are statues which represent our gods. We worship them and ask favours from them, and we give them presents. One day, his father saw him riding a statue, and he became furious. He ordered his son not to play with it again. Abraham asked, What is this statue, father? It has big ears, bigger than ours. His father answered, This statue is the God of God's son. These big ears show his deep knowledge. This made Abraham laugh. He was only seven years old at that time. 
Time went by and Abraham grew into a young man. Abraham always wondered about Allah, always searching for the truth. He knew Allah could not be a statue. It made him upset to see that the people of the kingdom were still praying to idols, offering them the best of their food, crying and asking them for forgiveness. One night, Abraham left his home and took a walk to a nearby mountain. He found a cave and sat leaning onto its wall. Abraham then got up and looked up at the beautiful sky and saw a dazzling star and wondered, could this be Allah? But when it disappeared, he said, I will not worship anything that sits and disappears. He then saw the shining moon rise up and said, Could this be Allah? But when it faded, he realized it too could not be Allah. He said, If Allah does not guide me, I will surely become one of the lost people. Abraham stayed until sunrise, and when he saw the bright sun, he wondered, Could this be Allah? It is bigger. But when it said, he understood that Allah could not be something that was created because Allah is the creator of everything. Abraham put his face to the ground and prayed. He knew that Allah had just guided him to the truth and had chosen him to be a prophet to guide his people. Looking up at the sky Searching for Allah knows how He rejected the way of worshipping gods of clay Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near And that the heart of a Muslim is sincere When Prophet Abraham went home, he went to his father and told him that he had just been guided by Allah and tried to give his father some advice. He said, O oh my father, follow me. I will guide you on the straight path. I am scared that you will be punished for worshipping idols rather than Allah alone. His father became angry and said, Do you reject my gods? If you do not stop speaking like this, I will stone you. Say you'd better leave right now. Prophet Abraham was very sad for his father and realized there was nothing more he could do to make him know the truth. So he went to the people of the kingdom and tried to guide them. O oh people, I have turned my face towards Allah. I do not bow down to any of your idols, for surely Allah is the one and only true God. There is nobody worthy of worship except him. The people became very angry when they heard him say this. But he said to them, Why do you bow down to these statues? They have no power to help or harm you. The people replied, We saw our fathers worship them. That is enough proof for us. But Abraham did not give up and told them, My Lord gives me food and drink when I need it, and heals me when I am sick. Your statues have no power to do anything. Prophet Abraham decided he would show them just how silly their beliefs were. He made a plan to destroy all their idols, but he did not tell anyone what he was going to do. There was a big celebration soon, which all the people usually go to outside of town. So Prophet Abraham waited until the whole town was empty and took an axe. He went inside the big temple where all the idols were kept. Statues of all shapes and sizes were sitting there, covered with decorations. There were plates of food in front of them, and Prophet Abraham jokingly asked the idols, Why don't you eat your food? It's getting cold. How silly were the people to offer food to statues. So Prophet Abraham started to smash the idols one by one, until they were all broken and ruined, except for one, the biggest statue 
in the temple. Prophet Abraham hung the axe around its neck and quickly went home. The next day, when the people went to the temple to pray to their idols, they were shocked to see all the statues broken into many pieces. They all gathered around the damage in wonder, trying to work out who could have done all of this. We heard a young man talking against our gods, they remembered. His name was Abraham. The people found Prophet Abraham and brought him into the temple. They asked him, Are you the one who has done this to our gods? Prophet Abraham thoughtfully replied, It was this statue here, the biggest of them all. Ask that statue, if he can speak. The people became annoyed and said, You know very well that these idols don't speak. So Prophet Abraham replied, Then why do you worship things that can't speak or see? or even defend themselves. Have you lost your minds? The people looked around in shame, because their minds and their hearts were telling them, the truth is with Prophet Abraham. But they had too much pride and wouldn't accept it. If they did, it would mean they and their forefathers were wrong for many generations. They started yelling and shouting, burn him, burn him. Take revenge for our gods. <laughs> for several days, the people of the kingdom gathered sticks and fuel for the fire. The fire was so big that the people near it were getting burnt themselves. <laughs> Prophet Abraham was not scared, because he trusted in Allah and knew that he would not let anything bad happen to him. News of this travelled very far, and people from lots of different towns came to watch. The fire was finally ready. The flames rose so high that even the birds could not fly across anymore because of the force of the heat. The people of the kingdom tied Prophet Abraham's hands and feet and placed him on a catapult, a machine that would throw him into the fire. Abraham was thrown into the air, heading straight towards the fire. At that moment, the angel Gabriel came to Prophet Abraham and asked him, Is there anything you wish for? Abraham could have wished to be saved from the fire. But all he said was, I only wish for Allah to be pleased with me. The fire submitted to the will of Allah, becoming cool and safe for Abraham. It only burnt the ropes tying him, and he sat in the midst of the fire, as if he were sitting in a garden. He glorified and praised Allah, the Almighty, with a heart that contained only his love for his Creator. All power and might belong to Allah, the Most High, the Great. When the fire finished burning, Prophet Abraham walked out in perfect condition. The people were shocked and amazed to see that Prophet Abraham was not harmed at all. This miracle shamed the tyrants, but it did not cool the flame of anger in their hearts. He tried every means to convince them. However, in spite of his love and care for his people, they felt angry and deserted him. The people arrested Prophet Abraham and decided to take him to see their king, Nimrod. Nimrod was very angry with Prophet Abraham and wanted to know why he smashed all their idols. Who is your God? 
he asked Prophet Abraham. He is Allah, the one and only God, who gives life and death, said Prophet Abraham. I can give life and death, said Nimrod. He ordered his guards to bring two slaves and ordered them to be killed. The guards killed one of the slaves. Then Nimrod said, I have excused the second slave. Let him go. <laughs> the slave was set free. See, I can also give life and death, he said to Prophet Abraham. Prophet Abraham replied, Allah makes the sun rise from the east. Can you make the sun rise from the west? Of course, Nimrod could not do this. No one has the power to do that except Allah alone. But instead of believing in Prophet Abraham and submitting to Allah, he became even more angry and arrogant. <laughs> Only one woman and one man of his people shared his belief in Allah. The woman's name was Sarah and the man's name was Lot, who later became a prophet. Abraham knew that nobody else would listen to him, so he decided to migrate so that he could spread Allah's message somewhere else. Before leaving Babylon, Abraham asked his father to submit to Allah once more, but his father refused and continued to worship statues and idols. Abraham, Sarah and Lot began their long journey All across ocean and land Incumbent on all men Is the pilgrimage to Mecca Fifth pillar of Islam In the footsteps of Muhammad The last prophet of Allah Bow down Bow down and praise Allah First side, first side of the Kaaba Break down, break down, break down and praise Allah They went from Babylon to Syria and Palestine by riding camels Their journey was very long, hot and tiring But they knew that Allah would reward them for it. On the way, they helped a lot of poor people by giving them food and advice. Soon after that, Abraham married Sarah because she was a good believer and so they could have children who would spread the message of Allah after their death. Allah will always be there, be there. One day, Abraham and his wife were passing by the territory of a tyrant king. Someone said to the tyrant king, This man Abraham is accompanied by a very charming lady. So the king sent for Abraham and asked him about Sarah, saying, who is this lady? Abraham replied, She is my sister. Abraham went to Sarah and said, O oh Sarah, there are no believers on the surface of the earth except us. The king asked me about you, and I have told him that you are my sister. Do not tell him otherwise. The king then called for Sarah, and when she went to him, he tried to take hold of her with his hand, but his hand became stiff and he could not move it. He asked Sarah, Pray to Allah for me, and I shall not harm you. So Sarah asked Allah to cure him, and he was cured. He tried to take hold of her for the second time, but again his hand became stiff. He again asked Sarah, Pray to Allah for me, and I shall not harm you. Sarah prayed again, and Allah cured him. He then called the guard who had brought her, and said, You have not brought me a human being, but have brought me a devil. The tyrant king then gave Sarah Hajar as a maidservant for Abraham. 
Sarah came back to Abraham while he was praying. Abraham asked, What has happened? She replied, Allah has spoiled the evil plot of that tyrant king and gave me Hajar as a maid. Abraham had aged and his hair was grey after many years spent calling people to Allah. Sarah thought that she and Abraham were lonely because she could not have a child. Therefore she offered her husband Hajar in marriage and prayed to Allah to send them a child. Hajar soon gave birth to her first son Ismail when Abraham was an old man. One day when Abraham woke up, he had a feeling that Allah wanted him to do something. He asked Hajar to get herself and baby Ismail ready for a long journey. Abraham, Hajar and the baby in her arms kept walking and walking for a long time until they reached the desert of the Arabian Peninsula and came to a dry valley having no fruit, no trees, no food and no water. The valley had no sign of life. After Abraham had helped his wife and child off the camel, he left them with a small amount of food and water, which was hardly enough for two days. He turned around and walked away. His wife hurried after him asking, Where are you going Abraham? Leaving us in this barren valley. He did not answer her and continued walking. She repeated what she had said, but he remained silent. Finally she understood that he was not acting on his own idea. She realized that Allah had commanded him to do this. She asked him, did Allah command you to do so? He replied yes. Then his great wife said, we are not going to be lost since Allah who has commanded you is with us. Abraham was very sad while he was walking home because he had left his wife and son in a place with no other people. He asked Allah to give Hajar and his baby plenty of fruits and to send people with good hearts to them. Hajar began to drink from the water that Abraham had left so she could feed Ismail her milk. Soon the water was finished and both she and her baby became very thirsty. Her baby began to cry, so she went to a close hill called Al Marwa and hoped that she might find somebody, but she did not find anyone. She kept running from Al Marwa to the other end called Al Safa seven times. When she reached Al Marwa for the last time, she heard a voice and so she kept quiet to hear where the voice was coming from. She heard the voice again and said, Oh, whoever you may be, you have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? And behold, she saw an angel digging the earth till water flowed from that place. She started to make something like a basin around it and filled her water skin with water. Some people traveling through Mecca saw birds flying around Al Marwa and thought the birds might be flying around water. They were right. When they arrived at the small well, they found a woman there with a baby. They asked Hajar if they could drink from it. Hajar allowed them and many people came to live with Hajar and Ismail in Al Marwa. Now she and Ismail were not alone anymore. Ismail grew up and learned Arabic from the people and his virtues caused them to love and admire him. He always wondered about his father but thought his father was not going to be coming back anytime soon. 
Ismail then married a woman from the people that came to live with them. There is no happier day in your life than the virtue of being man and wife. There's joy without any end. Allah's blessing on this day does descend, descend. Meanwhile, Abraham, who had not seen his son for a very long time, came back to Mecca to visit them. When he arrived, People told him that Hajar had died, but his son was still alive. Abraham was very sad that his wife had died, but happy and thankful to Allah that his son was still alive. Abraham missed his son Ismail very much. When Ismail saw his father, he stood up and hugged him very tightly. He could not believe it. It was a very happy time for Abraham and his son. Allah wanted to test their faith, to see how strong their love for him was. So he sent a dream to Abraham. In his dream, Abraham saw himself killing his son as a sacrifice to Allah. Abraham told his son about the dream, and they both realized it was an order from Allah. Why else would Allah send such an important dream to Abraham? Ismail told his father to do what Allah had asked him to. Abraham lay his son on the ground and put his head down. Just as he was about to slaughter his son, Allah sent a sheep from heaven to be killed instead. Allah had saved Ismail from death. Abraham was very happy that he did not have to kill his son because he loved him very much. Abraham slaughtered the sheep and they had a big celebration. Abraham and Ismail kept calling people to worship Allah. At that time, there was no place for people to worship Allah. So one day, Allah ordered Abraham to build a house. Abraham said to his son, O oh Ismail, Allah has given me an order to build a house. Ismail said, Do what your Lord has ordered you to do. Abraham asked him, Will you help me? Ismail replied, Of course I will help you. Then they raised the foundation of the house, which is now known as the Kaaba. While building the Kaaba, they were saying, O oh, our Lord, accept this service from us. Verily, you are the all-hearer, the knower. When they completed the foundation and built the corners, Abraham asked Ismail to find the best stone to lay in one of the corners. Ismail said to his father, I feel tired, but Abraham insisted. So Ismail went to search for a stone. While he was gone, the angel Gabriel brought Abraham the black stone. He told him that Prophet Adam had brought the stone down from paradise and it was originally white. However, the sins of the people had blackened it. When Ismail returned and saw the black stone near the corner, he asked his father where it came from. Abraham replied, It was brought by someone who is more active than you and never gets tired. So they completed the building of the Kaaba while praying to Allah to accept their work. Allah was very pleased with Abraham and Ismail for spreading his message. and proclaim the pilgrimage among men. They will come to thee on foot and mounted on every camel. Lean on account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways.
Wasn't that an amazing story? I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Do you know what time it is? It's quiz time with Zaki! That's right! In which city was Prophet Abraham born in? Is it A. Mecca, B. Babylon or C. Medina? The answer is B. Babylon. Who was the mother of Ismail? Is it A. Sarah, B. Mary or C. Hajar? The answer is C. Hajar. What is the well that Hajar built called? Is it A. Zamzam, B. The well of Hajar or C. Abraham's well? The answer is A. Zamzam. Which city is the well of Zamzam in? Is it A. Babylon, B. Mecca or C. Medina? The answer is B. Mecca. Which prophet is mentioned in our five daily prayers? Is it A. Muhammad, B. Abraham or C. Both? The answer is C. Both. Where did the black stone originally come from? Is it A. Mecca, B. Paradise or C. Babylon? The answer is B. Paradise. How long does one live in paradise? Is it A. 100 million years, B. 50 trillion years or C. Forever? The answer is C. Forever. Allah sent King Nimrod an insect to bite him in his nose. It was very painful. The only way the pain stopped was when people hit him on his nose with their shoes. King Nimrod died from this small insect bite. How humiliating. Prophet Abraham was in the fire for 40 or 50 days. The angel Gabriel was with Prophet Abraham in the cool fire, wiping his face. When Prophet Abraham was in the fire, all the animals tried to put out the fire, except for the lizard. Allah punished the man who made the catapult that was used to throw Prophet Abraham in the big fire. Allah caused the earth to swallow him up. 
and he will be sinking in it until the day of judgment. All the prophets that came after Prophet Abraham descended from him. Another name that Allah gave Prophet Abraham was Al-Khalil, which means he is full of love. I learned from Prophet Abraham that even if your parents are not Muslim, you should always respect and love them. You should never ever raise your voice or argue with them. You should always care for them, especially in their old age. I learned from the Prophet Abraham that the best friend to have is Allah. I also learned from Prophet Abraham the importance of relying on Allah alone. When Prophet Abraham was thrown into the air and into the fire, he still relied on Allah and knew that he would protect him. I also learned that Allah has power over everything. He made the hot fire become cool. SubhanAllah. I love Prophet Abraham. I hope you all did well in the quiz. There is a lot more you can read and learn about Prophet Abraham, which you can find in many great books. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum. The sun is going down. And the birds are on their way back home I make my prayer with everyone Cause it's time to learn with so much fun Come and get around or lay in it. One for Kids Online Store Check out a range of fun and educational Zaki and Friends products your children will love. There's the world famous Zaki Talking and Singing Toy, Zaki's Arabic Pack, Cloud Pillow, Plush Toys and more. For Ramadan, we have the new Ramadan Show Bag and the Ramadan Educational Pack. Our products are designed to keep your children entertained while learning about their deen. Purchase online now. Shop.1forkids.net We thank you for your support. It's a beautiful day here in Zaki's Meadow. The sun is shining, the air is sweet with the smell of blossoming flowers, and the grass is lush and green. Subhanallah! Zaki walked out of his cave into the bright morning sunshine, carrying his fishing rod. Zaki looked up into the sky and frowned slightly. Where's Tufa? he wondered. They had planned to go fishing today, and it wasn't like too far to be late for something like this. Kazwa came walking by Zaki's cave and stopped. He saw that Zaki looked very worried. Assalamu alaikum, Zaki. Is everything all right? Kazwa asked. Wa alaikum assalam, Kazwa. I was just wondering where Tufa is. We're supposed to meet up and go fishing today, but he's not here yet. Zaki added with concern. Wait a minute, said Kazwa excitedly. I see something flying this way. Just then, a little pink bird flew out of the sky and landed on Zaki's outstretched hand. Assalamu alaikum, Tima, said Zaki and Kazwa puzzled. After all, they were expecting Tufa. Wa alaikum assalam, said Tima, puffing slightly. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Tufa is sick and won't be able to go fishing today. Oh no, Zaki and Kazwa sighed. Well, what do we do now? asked Kazwa. It's such a nice day to go fishing. Zaki thought to himself and suddenly brightened up. Looks like you have a plan, Zaki, said Tima. Yes, I do, said Zaki. We should really visit Tufa and cheer him up. Aw, but I wanted to go fishing, Kazwa moaned. Well, we can do both, Zaki said. There's a nice fishing spot near Tufa's tree. 
That's right, Zaki, said Tima. We can visit Tufa, and if he feels any better, we can all go fishing together. Kazwa cheered with delight, raced off, and returned with his fishing rod. Tufa will be so happy to see you, said Tima. I remember Allah. Assalamu alaikum, children. Wa alaikum assalam, Zaki. You know, it's very important to visit the sick and let them know that you are thinking of them. My friend Ailem here will be joining us today and reminding us the du'as to say on our journey, as well as offering us great advice. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Wa alaikum assalam. Hey, Ailem. Do you have a special du'a for traveling? I believe I do. Subhanallah, sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrinin wa inna ila rabbina lamunqalibun Which means, glory be to the one, Allah, who has put this vehicle under our control while we were unable to do this ourselves. And certainly to our Lord, we are returning. When the du'a was finished, Alim rolled back up and joined Zaki, Kazwa and Tima on their journey to visit Tufa. After a while, Zaki and his friends came to a clearing on a hill. It was beginning to get windy and dark clouds were forming over the horizon. Oh dear, said Zaki. Don't worry everyone, Alim said. I have a dua that we can all say. Dua for wind. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa a'udhu bika min sharriha. Which means, Oh Allah, I ask you for its good and I seek protection in you from its evil. Encouraged by the dua, and feeling closer to Allah, Zaki and his friends continued on their journey to visit their sick friend Tufa. The dark clouds appeared in the sky and began to rain on Zaki and his friends. Alim offered them the following dua. Dua for rain. Allahumma sayyiban nafi'a. Which means, O oh Allah, send beneficial rain clouds. The rain became heavier as bright bolts of lightning and loud, booming thunder filled the sky. Let's seek shelter, said Tima, or we'll get sick too. They all agreed that was a great idea and ran into the nearby woods where they found a small cave. As they watched the raindrops fall, Alim comforted them with the following dua. Dua for thunder. Subhanalladhi yusabbihu ar-ra'du bihamdihi wal malaikatu min khifati. Which means, glory be to the one, Allah, who the thunder glorifies his praises as well as the angels in fear of him. Soon, Zaki poked his head out of the cave and saw that the rain had stopped. Tima, Kazwa and Alim all joined Zaki outside and looked around. Alim began to bounce around excitedly. Do you have a dua for us? asked Zaki with a hint of curiosity. I sure do, Alim replied and offered the following dua. Dua after rain. Mutirna bi fadlillahi wa rahmati which means, it has rained by the bounty of Allah and His mercy. I love Allah, He loves Allah, She loves Allah, we all love Allah. He gave us the air that we breathe every day, He gave us His land to stay on the right way. Zaki and his friends soon came to a spooky part of the woods called Shadow Valley. Shadow Valley um, 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 um. Shadow Valley. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Kazwa's knees began to tremble as strange noises echoed from the shadows. Oh, I don't like this place, not one bit, said Kazwa, jumping into a nearby bush to hide. The creepiest place you would ever see. Zaki urged Kazwa to move on. Come on, Kazwa. If we stick together, we'll be okay, inshallah. Kazwa reluctantly came out from behind the bush and joined Zaki, Tima, and Alim on their journey to see Tufa. Eyes gazing at you from every tree. Shadow Valley, um, 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 um. Shadow Valley, ooh, um, um, um. Um, um, Shadow Valley. Zaki trod carefully for it was dark and gloomy in Shadow Valley. Suddenly, Saki stopped and found himself near the edge of a ledge. Phew, that was close! Zaki sighed with relief. Unfortunately, Kazwa, who wasn't looking where he was going, bumped into Zaki, sending them both tumbling down. Oh. Oh. Zaki and Kazwa got up, dusted themselves off, and surprisingly found themselves near a graveyard. Tima and Alim caught up with Zaki and Kazwa and looked at all the graves. Alim offered them the following du'a. Du'a for visiting graves. Assalamu alaykum ahla diyari min al mu'minina wal muslimin. Wa inna insha'allahu bikum lahiqoon. Nas'alu Allah lana wa lakum al afiyah. Which means, peace be upon you, O people of the graves, both the believers and the Muslims. And insha'Allah, we will be united with you. We ask Allah to grant us all well-being. Zaki and his friends continued through the woods of Shadow Valley. Kazwa huddled close behind Zaki, frightened by the strange sounds coming out of the forest. Shadow Valley, um, 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 um. Shadow Valley. Alim popped up and offered the dua for fear. La ilaha illallah, which means there is none worthy of worship except Allah. <laughs> Zaki and his friends left the gloomy woods of Shadow Valley and came out onto a large hilly field. The clouds suddenly began to part, and the sun shined down, bringing the flowers and the trees to life. When we wake up in the morning, when we wake up, we thank Allah for everything we have. Oh, we start the day by praying, oh, praying for those who may not have what we have. Every day's another oh, day oh, where we get to smile oh, and play oh, blessings upon blessings from him Allah Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam may peace be upon you upon you be peace oh 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 we are happy that we're Muslim. La ilaha illallah. Islam is full of love, it's made for me and you. Me and you. But we have a job as Muslim. Oh. Standing up against wrong, that is what we. Alim reminded them what to say when you see any of Allah's beautiful creations. Subhanallah. Which means, how perfect is Allah? As Zaki and his friends enjoyed the sunshine, they heard the adhan coming from the masjid over the hill. 
It must be time for Zohar prayer, said Zaki. Great timing. We can perform our Zohar prayers and make dua for Tufa to get better. When we hear the Adhan, we should repeat what the Muaddin says. However, when he says, Hayya ala salah or Hayya ala al falah, then we should say, Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. Zaki, Kazwa, and Tima approach the front door to the masjid. Now just remember, said Alim, when entering the masjid with our right foot, we say, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi, Allahumma ftah li abwaba rahmatik. Which means, in the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger. O oh Allah, open for me the doors of your mercy. Zaki and his friends entered the masjid, prayed zuhr, and made dua for their sick friend Tufa. When they were done, Alim met them at the door and said, When leaving the masjid, with our left foot, we say, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik Which means, in the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings be upon Allah's messenger. O oh Allah, I ask you for your favor. Zaki and his friends marched on to visit their sick friend Tufa. Meanwhile, Zayn the postman was busy doing his rounds. He looked concerned because he was running late for his delivery. He was hopping along when he came across Zaki and his friends. After they all exchanged greetings, the friends narrated that they were off to visit their sick friend Tufa. Zaki asked Zayn where he was going in such a rush, and he told them that he was worried because he wouldn't have time to deliver a parcel to Harun and Rashid, as they lived in the opposite direction to where he was going. Zaki told him not to worry, they could deliver the parcel, because they had to travel past Harun and Rashid to get to Tufa's place. Zayn was very pleased to hear this, and told him that it would really help him. Zaki said that they loved helping out all their friends, so Zayn handed the package to Zaki. He became quite curious and wondered what the parcel might contain. Zayn told him it was a new book about health and fitness that they had ordered. Hmm, Zaki said, it's good to know they're still keeping fit. We'll deliver it straight away, Zayn. Zayn smiled happily and thanked them once again as he hopped away to finish delivering all the other letters. The friends watched him go, turned, and set off towards Harun and Rashid's place. Let's get fit with Zaki. Let's be active every day. Every day. Let's stay healthy with Zaki. It's so much fun and good for you. Let's get fit. Let's get fit with Zaki. When they finally arrived, Zaki handed the parcel over to them. They both wanted to be the first to open the package to see their new book. Zaki and his friends decided to leave them to work it out themselves, so they carried on with their journey. On the way, Zaki saw Dawood sitting in a tree eating something that looked very tasty. Assalamu alaikum Dawood, said Zaki. I'm wondering what you're eating. It looks very tasty and I'm sure Tufa, who is sick, would like to try some. Kazwa's tummy suddenly rumbled loudly. It looks like Kazwa would like to try some too, giggled Tima. Dawood gave them directions to a cluster of berry bushes and waved them goodbye. Zaki and his friends went over to the berry bushes to pick some berries for Tufa, 
which happened to be one of his favorite fruits. Hey, little bird, so way up high, light up the sky with your color design. Tell me who made you and I, me to walk and you to fly. The little bird said, that's my Lord, the little bird said, that's my Lord, the little bird said, that's my Lord, Allah, the creator of us all. Allahu Akbar, our creator, there's no one greater. Then Allah, so why do we stand tall? Too proud to recognize what's right before our eyes. Signs from the Lord. They piled them up into a bucket. After a few attempts, the bucket was full of juicy, plump berries. So they gathered their things and made their way to Tufa's treehouse. Meanwhile, Tufa dozed away in his nest with a thermometer in his mouth. He had been so sick that he couldn't go fishing with his friend Zaki. Suddenly, he began to feel much better and noticed his temperature had gone down. He spat out his thermometer and jumped out of his nest. <coughs> It should be just around the bend, said Tima. Zaki saw Tufa in the distance and waved to him. Tufa's face lit up with joy as he saw all his friends walking towards him. Alim unfurled and said, When we greet each other, we say, Assalamu alaikum which means, peace be upon you. And we reply to them by saying, Wa alaykum salam which means, and peace be upon you too. I'm glad to see you're much better, Zaki said cheerfully. We all pitched in and got you a bucket of your favorite berries to make you feel better. Tufa jumped up and down excitedly. Alim unfurled and said, When we receive a gift, we say to them, Jazakallahu khayran, which means, May Allah reward you with goodness. And we reply to them by saying, Wa iyakum, which means, And to you as well. La ilaha illallah. Mmm, said Tufa, licking his beak. Tufa flew out of the tree and landed on the ground where his friends sat. They all enjoyed the berries together. Alim unfurled and said, Just remember that before we eat or drink, we must say, Bismillah, which means, in the name of Allah. And we must eat and drink with our right hand. They all munched on the delicious berries, and after they had finished, Alim opened up and recited the following du'a. Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amani hadha wa razaqnihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa la quwwa. Which means, all praise is for Allah, who fed me this and provided it for me without any might or power from myself. Zaki, Kazwa, Tima, Tufa and Alim enjoyed their afternoon together, fishing by the river. They had enjoyed their fun journey, learnt something along the way, and their friend Tufa had become well again. Walhamdulillah. What more could you ask for? I remember, you remember, you remember. such a fun time on our trip to Tufa's house. And the best part is, we learnt so many du'as along the way with my friend Alim. How about we go over these du'as again so we can memorize them, inshallah. 
Dua for traveling. سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وإنا إلى ربنا لمنقلبون which means Glory be to the one, Allah, who has put this vehicle under our control while we were unable to do this ourselves and certainly to our Lord we are returning. Dua for wind اللهم إني أسألك خيرها وأعوذ بك من شرها which means O oh Allah, I ask you for its good and I seek protection in you from its evil. Dua for thunder سبحان الذي يصبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته which means Glory be to the one, Allah, who the thunder glorifies his praises as well as the angels in fear of him. Dua for rain. Allahumma sayyiban nafi'a. Which means, O oh Allah, send beneficial rain clouds. Dua after rain. Mutirna bi fadlillahi wa rahmati. Which means, it has rained by the bounty of Allah and His mercy. Dua for visiting graves. Assalamu alaikum ahl al-diyari min al-mu'minin wal-muslimin wa inna insha'allahu bikum lahiqoon nas'alu Allah lana wa lakum al-afiyah which means peace be upon you O people of the graves both the believers and the Muslims. And insha'Allah we will be united with you. We ask Allah to grant us all well-being. Dua for fee. La ilaha illallah. Which means, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. When seeing Allah's beautiful creations, we say, Subhanallah. Which means, how perfect is Allah? When entering the masjid with our right foot, we say, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi. Allahumma ftah li abwaba rahmatik. Which means, in the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger. O oh Allah, open for me the doors of your mercy. When leaving the masjid with our left foot, we say Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik Which means, in the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings be upon Allah's messenger. O oh Allah, I ask you for your favor. When we greet one another, we say Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. And we reply to them by saying, Wa alaikum salam, which means, and peace be upon you too. When we receive a gift, we say to them, Jazakallahu khayran, which means, may Allah reward you with goodness. And we reply to them by saying, Wa iyakum, which means, and to you as well. Before we eat or drink, we say Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. And we must eat and drink with our right hand. Dua after eating. Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amani hadha wa razaqnihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa la quwwa. Which means, all praise is for Allah, who fed me this and provided it for me without any might or power from myself. When I wake up in the morning, I Allah. in the middle of the night, I Allah. before I go to school, I Allah. 
And when I fly my kite, do you remember Allah? Yes, I remember Allah. Do you remember Allah? Yes, I remember Allah. We remember Allah. They remember Allah. He remembers Allah. She remembers Allah. Before I eat or drink, I remember Allah. Or when I'm getting dressed, I remember Allah. Before I go to sleep, I remember Allah. Or even when I sit, I remember Allah. Do you remember Allah? Yes, I remember Allah. Do you remember Allah? She remembers Allah I remember You remember You remember We remember We remember They remember They remember He remembers He remembers She remembers She remembers I pray five times a day and fast in Ramadan Pay all my zakat And go away for Hajj Do you remember Allah? Yes, I remember Allah Do you remember Allah? Yes, I remember Allah Malaysia Australia, America, India, Japan, Indonesia, France, Great Britain, Pakistan, South Africa, Nigeria, Spain, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Lebanon, Syria, Fiji, Greece, Italy, Brazil, Bangladesh, Turkey, Afghanistan, Palestine, Brunei, Thailand, Russia, Bosnia, Portugal, Canada, the whole universe remembers Can you imagine being asked by Allah to tell the disbelieving people that Allah is real and He exists? Imagine the disbelievers didn't want to listen to you. Then leaving and sailing far away in a ship, then having to jump off because it was too heavy. Imagine them being swallowed by a large whale. This is the story of Prophet Yunus. Prophet Yunus, Prophet Yunus, Prophet Yunus. Mm.
cities in Iraq. Prophet Yunus salam, went to the people of Nineveh in hope of making them understand that Allah is one and that nothing or no one other than Allah has the right to be obeyed and worshipped. He also wanted them to stop doing evil things and lead a good life because this is what Allah wants us to do. He told many people that Allah is real and that He exists. He warned them of the punishment for those who do not accept Allah's commands. Although Prophet Yunus tried very hard to convince them, the disbelievers did not listen to Prophet Yunus and did not want to believe in Allah. They continued to worship statues and idols. They did not like that he got in the way of their worship. They told him that they and their ancestors had worshipped these idols for many years and no harm had come to them. So there was no reason to change their beliefs. Prophet Yunus did not understand why these people prayed to false gods of stone. The disbelievers had built them with their own hands. These idols had no power to do anything. Did you know, many years ago, people used to bow and pray to idols, even though they knew the statues could do them no good. They still continued to pray to them. Until this day, some people still worship statues that are made of metal, rock, wood or other materials. As Muslims, we do not worship anything but Allah. We believe that Allah is one and that He has no partners. Believing in more than one God or that Allah has partners is called shirk. And this is the worst sin in the world. Prophet Yunus salam, tried to stay strong. Day after day, he asked the people around him to believe in Almighty Allah. But still, the disbelievers did not take him seriously. Prophet Yunus salam, became very upset that they were not listening to him. He warned the people of Nineveh that a horrible punishment may be sent by Allah if they did not believe. Instead of fearing Allah and believing in him, they told Prophet Yunus they were not afraid of his threats and ignored him. Prophet Yunus's heart was full of sadness 
as well as anger, because they would not believe. Even though Allah did not command Prophet Yunus السلام, to leave the town and stop preaching, he decided to leave Mosul and go somewhere else, where people may listen to his message. Prophet Yunus السلام, gathered some of his belongings and boarded a ship which would take him far away from the stone worshippers because he believed that no matter how hard he tried to convince them of Allah's existence, they would not change their minds. Although I never saw his face So beautiful, Mr. Shortly after, Prophet Yunus السلام, left the town of Mosul. A terrible disaster started in the town. The sky began to change color. No longer was it a lovely blue. It changed to a red, fiery mix of colors. It looked like the clouds were on fire. After seeing this frightening, unbelievable sight, the people began to remember what Prophet Yunus السلام, had been trying to tell them. This is not happening by chance, the people thought. Prophet Yunus السلام, had been telling the truth, and because they had not believed him, Allah was punishing them. They understood that they would soon meet their punishment. Everyone was very afraid. Every man and woman asked Allah to have mercy on them and their children. The people felt bad for what they had done and wished that they had not sent Prophet Yunus away by not believing his message. They knew in their hearts that what they did was wrong. So Allah forgave the people because as we know, Allah loves those who ask him for forgiveness. Allah says in the glorious Quran, Allah is the all-pardoning, all-forgiving. In Surah Al-Nisa, verse number 99. I seek refuge with Allah. I seek refuge with Allah. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, repent to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, surrender to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Stay away, stay away, major sins. Ignore the whispers, O Lord. Have mercy on us all. After the people of Mosul were forgiven, the sky went back to its original, beautiful, blue color. The people prayed for Prophet Yunus السلام, to return so that he could guide them on the straight path and tell them more about the message of Allah. What will you do on judgment day? What will you think? What will you say? Where will you run? Where will you hide? Where will you turn? Where will you cry? Did you know two of Allah's many beautiful names are Ar-Rahman, the Most Merciful, and Al-Ghaffar, the Forgiving? Remember, no one is perfect and everyone makes mistakes. When we do something wrong, we must ask Allah for forgiveness. We must believe that what we did was wrong and truly promise never to do it again.
After boarding the ship and traveling for a while, Prophet Yunus salam started to realize that the ship was not sailing according to plan. The weather began to change and a horrible storm took place. It felt as though the ship would break into a thousand pieces. The waves were huge and rose up as high as mountains. The wind was blowing fiercely and the ship started to shake and rock from side to side, filling with water and becoming heavier and heavier. The people in the ship threw some of their luggage into the water to make the ship lighter, but it wasn't enough. They decided that at least one passenger had to jump overboard so that the ship would not sink. They agreed that picking names would be the fairest way to decide who must jump off the ship. Each person's name was written on a piece of paper and then placed together. Prophet Yunus' name was pulled out first, but the people believed he was a good man and did not want to throw him into the angry sea. So they decided to give Prophet Yunus salam, another chance. Once again, a name was drawn, and again, it was Prophet Yunus's name on the paper. The people decided to give him one last chance. So for the third time, a piece of paper was chosen from amongst the others. And for the third time, it was Prophet Yunus' name. It was clear that Allah wanted Prophet Yunus salam, thrown off the ship. Prophet Yunus knew this is what Allah wanted, so he allowed himself to be thrown into the sea. Gracious, the most merciful. I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind. As Prophet Yunus began to swim, Allah commanded a giant whale to come to the surface and swallow him. Allah didn't order the whale to eat Prophet Yunus, but only to keep him in his stomach, so that Prophet Yunus could have time to think about what he had done by abandoning his duty to tell the people of Nineveh about Allah. 
did you know, whales are found in all the oceans of the world. They are a member of the marine mammal family, which also includes dolphins, seals and sea lions. Some whales eat small fish like krill. Other whales eat bigger sea creatures like dolphins. Whales can't breathe underwater like fish. They breathe like we do, but not from their mouths. They breathe from a hole on top of their heads called a blowhole. When they reach the surface of the water, they take in air through this blowhole. There are two types of whales. Toothed whales who have teeth and baleen whales who do not. Whales can be seen doing many interesting things, like blowing water out of their blowholes, swimming, beaching, or just splashing around. Some whales like the blue whale or the humpback even sing. When whales splash their tails, the sound of the splash can sometimes be heard many kilometers away. SubhanAllah, that's amazing! After a while, Prophet Yunus السلام, woke up in a fright, as he didn't know where he was. At first, he thought that he may have been in a grave because it was so dark. But after a few moments, he realized that he was in the stomach of a whale. Prophet Yunus السلام, thought about what had happened before and knew that he had made a terrible mistake by leaving the town of Mosul before Allah told him to do so. Prophet Yunus السلام, begged for Allah's forgiveness, made sujood and admitted that what he did was wrong. Oh Allah, I'm asking you to make me from those who love you and for those who love you to love me too. Prophet Yunus السلام, stayed in the whale's stomach for a long time. He started to praise and give glory to Allah by making dua many times and saying, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. The angels in heaven heard Prophet Yunus praising Allah and asked Allah to forgive Prophet Yunus and release him from the dark stomach of the whale. Allah accepted all the du'as and ordered the whale to cast Prophet Yunus السلام, onto the shore. Eventually, the whale threw Yunus on the shore that Allah willed to his surprise He saw the people worshipping only Allah Prophet Yunus Even in the deepest, darkest ocean Allah responded to the Prophet Yunus In the belly of the whale He raised his hands up And praised Allah the Almighty the whale listened to Allah's command and beached itself, throwing Prophet Yunus السلام, where Allah had ordered it to. If Prophet Yunus السلام, did not repent, he would have stayed in the whale's stomach until Judgment Day. Did you know that angels are made of light? We all have two angels with us all the time, sitting on each of our shoulders. One records all the good deeds we do, such as praying and helping our parents, while the other records our bad deeds. Believing in angels is one of the six pillars of Iman. The other five pillars are believing in Allah, His books, His messengers, Judgment Day and fate.
When Prophet Yunus السلام, reached the shore, he was in terrible pain. His skin began to ache from being in the whale for so long. Prophet Yunus cried out to Allah for protection. So Allah commanded a tree to grow over Prophet Yunus which gave him shade and protection from the sun as well as delicious foods to eat. Give thanks to Allah. Slowly, Prophet Yunus السلام, started to regain his strength, so he began to make his way back home. When he arrived home, he was surprised to see that the disbelievers were now believers. Prophet Yunus السلام, was a very happy man. Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was Take hold of your email Don't give in to shaitan Oh you who believe Please give thanks to Allah An amazing fact One of the strangest things that whales do is beaching Beaching is when a whale comes close to the shore Then flips itself on its back leaping out of the water and landing on the shore. Until this day, no one really knows why whales beach. Some people say that whales beach when they are in groups. Others say that whales beach so that they can breathe the fresh air that is near the shore. But like some things in the world, only Allah really knows why. With Prophet Yunus, Allah had ordered the whale to beach itself to release Prophet Yunus from its belly. And that's exactly what it did. I wonder if that's the reason whales still beach themselves. From this amazing story of Prophet Yunus السلام, we have learned the importance of patience. Sometimes things may get in the way of our plans, but if we persist and never give up, we will achieve our goal insha'Allah. We have also learned that we must always remember Allah during the good times and the bad. Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Assalamu alaikum. Even in the deepest, darkest ocean, Allah responded to the Prophet Yunus. In the belly of the whale, he raised his hands up and praised Allah the Almighty and asked Allah for forgiveness. Prophet Yunus, in the belly of the whale, never did he ever doubt that Allah is the most. Merciful and even of every dua. He had a mission to convey Allah's word to his people. Never did he doubt his message from Allah. Prophet Yunus would plead with his people to worship only Allah. Please give up your idols. Please stop prostrating to them. Allah created you and everything that you see around But they would not take heed, they ignored his plea Prophet Yunus ran away, away, away. Even in the deepest, darkest ocean Allah responded to the Prophet Yunus in the belly of the whale, he raised his hands up and praised Allah the Almighty and asked Allah for forgiveness. Prophet Yunus in the belly of the whale, never did he ever doubt that Allah is the most merciful and hearer of every dua. 
of an illness boarded a ship and set off on his journey. After some time, it ran into a storm as they approached the middle of the ocean. The ship began to capsize, lives were in danger, but Allah had the master plan. Prophet Yunus knew what he had to do, his name was drawn three times. He jumped overboard, he was swallowed whole by a whale sent by Allah. Darkest ocean Allah responded to the Prophet Yunus In the belly of the whale He raised his hands up And praised Allah the Almighty And asked Allah for forgiveness In the belly of the whale Never did he ever doubt that Allah Is the most merciful Eventually, the well through illness on the shore that Allah willed. To his surprise, he saw the people worshiping only Allah. Prophet Yunus, even in the deepest, darkest ocean, Allah responded to the Prophet Yunus in the belly of the well. He raised his hands up. And praised Allah the Almighty And asked Allah for forgiveness Prophet Yunus in the belly of the way Never did he ever doubt that Allah Is the most merciful and hearer of Time it is? It's peace time with Zaki. Is it true or false? Prophet Yunus alayhi salam left the town of Mosul after asking Allah's permission. Is it true or false? It's false. The whale swallowed the boat and all of its passengers. True or false? It's false. Prophet Yunus salam prayed to Allah and asked for forgiveness while he was stuck in the belly of the whale. True or false? It's true. Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was thrown out of the boat because it was too heavy. True or false? It's true. After Prophet Yunus salam left the town of Mosul, a huge storm hit the town. Is it true or false? It's true. Prophet Yunus salam was swallowed by a huge great white shark. Is it true or false? It's false. The angels heard the dua of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam and asked Allah to forgive him. Is it true or false? It's true. 
Prophet Yunus السلام, returned to Mosul and found that the people were still worshipping idols. Is it true or false? It's false! Guess what the animal is! It's a sea turtle! It's a crab! A dolphin! It's an octopus! It's a sea lion! It's a stingray! That's a clownfish! It's an eel! It's a shark! It's a whale! Ramadan is coming Marhaba Who's there? It's Ramadan Welcome, oh month of mercy The month of mercy Where have you been, Ramadan? We've waited for you such a long time We missed you so Where have you been? Please do come in And stay for good Everything's so nice When you're around We've waited long My man is weak Please help me too Pray through the night And fast the days To feed the poor Who's there? It's Ramadan Welcome, oh month of mercy You are the month of mercy Where have you been, Ramadan? Where have you been? Waited for you such a long time Ramadan The time is here To really strive And be the best Most than I can Go to the mosque Every single day And every night Inshallah I'll do my best To please Allah And read Quran As best I can Knock, knock, look who's here Ramadan is here again 
Ramadan, our favorite month. Ramadan, we miss you heaps. Knock, knock, look who's here. The month that's known as the mercy. The month that makes me so happy. Welcome, oh month of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan. We miss you so. Where have you been? Please do come in. And stay for good. Everything's so nice. When you're around, we've waited long. My man is weak. Please help me too. Pray through the night and fast the day to feed the poor. The time is here to really strive and be the best. Be the best I can. Go to the mosque. Every single day, try and every night, try. Inshallah, I'll do my best to please Allah and read Quran as best I can. Ramadan is coming. Marhaba. It's Ramadan. Tufa, we got mail. Dear Zaki, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yosef and I am six years old. I really love the Quran and inshallah, one day I want to memorize and learn the entire Quran so that I can teach it to all the people. Can you please teach me the Quran? Thank you. From Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam Yusuf. I would love to teach you some short surahs from the Quran. You know, Allah revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the year 16. The Quran was sent to guide all people to the right path. So whether you are from Egypt, China, France or any other country, the Quran is available for you to read and benefit from in your language insha'Allah. I have an idea. How about we go to my friends from around the world who have learned and memorized surahs from the Quran and they can teach us what they have learned so far. Let's first go to Pakistan and see my friend Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mohammed 
and I am from Pakistan. In Pakistan, we have over 173 million Muslims. This makes us the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. In my country, our main religion is Islam and the Quran is very important in our lives. It teaches us about who we are and how we should live so that we can be good and kind to people animals and even plants. Behind me is Al Faisal Mosque, which is the largest mosque in Pakistan and the sixth largest mosque in the world. I come here every day to make my salah and learn Quran. One of my favorite surahs is Surah Al-Asr. Al-Asr means the time. This surah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mecca. I am now going to recite Surah Al-Asr. Are you ready to recite along with him? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر The meaning of this surah is By the time Man is surely in loss Except those who believe and do good deeds And encourage one another to truth And encourage one another to patience I love this surah because it is so easy to learn. It has taught me the importance of not wasting my time, but instead use my time to do good deeds and always be truthful. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that patience is beautiful and if we encourage others to do so, then we will surely be successful. Insha'Allah. Here are some apples on this picture in my tree. Thanks so much, Muhammad. Surah Al-Asr is one of my favorite surahs in the Quran too. It's a short surah, but has so much meaning in it. Okay, for the next surah, we will go to my friend Suhaila from Australia. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Suhaila and I'm from Australia. We have many animals that are special to our country, such as kangaroos, koalas, and even an animal called a platypus. A platypus is very special because it has webbed feet, a beak like a duck, it lays eggs, swims in water and eats vegetation. Subhanallah, what a wonderful creation! In Australia, we have around 500,000 Muslims. There are so many schools and places that teach the Quran. And I am grateful to Allah that I am able to attend one of these schools. She loves the Quran. Did you know that the Quran has never changed since it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam over 1400 years ago? Subhanallah, what an amazing fact. Alhamdulillah, I have memorized Juz Amma. And one of the surahs I learned and memorized is Surah Al-Quraysh. 
Al Quraysh is the name of the noble and respected tribe in Mecca, which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came from. Surah Al Quraysh was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was in Mecca. I am now going to recite Surah Al Quraysh. Okay, all together now. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف. The meaning of this surah is so that the Quraysh might remain secure, secure in their winter and summer journeys. Let them, therefore, worship the sustainer of this temple, who has given them food against hunger and made them safe from danger. Allah revealed this surah in honor of the tribe of Quraysh. They were the noble people that Allah chose to protect the Kaaba. From this surah, I learned that those who take good care of things that Allah has entrusted them, Allah will certainly honor them, insha'Allah. That's why I need the Quran. Thank you Suhaila for teaching us all that terrific information. Yes, the platypus is such an amazing creation, isn't it? Maybe one day, inshallah, I can meet a platypus. For the next surah, we will go to my friend Abdurrahman from Lebanon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdul Rahman and I am from Lebanon. Lebanon is a very small country in the Middle East and has a Muslim population of over two and a half million people. We have so many yummy dishes such as tabbouleh, kibbeh, and Lebanese bread. Mmm. Lebanon has the oldest continuously living city in the world called Byblos. It's believed to have been founded around 5000 BC. In Lebanon, we speak Arabic, the language of the Quran, and so it's not so difficult to learn the Quran. One of my goals in life is to memorize and understand the entire Quran, inshallah. I recently learned Surah Al-Fil. Al-Fil means the elephant. This surah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. I am now going to recite Surah Al-Fil. How about we all try to recite together? A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل the meaning of this surah is Have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? Did he not cause their plan to end in vain? And sent down on them swarms of birds which pelted them with stones of baked clay then he rendered them like straws eaten up by cattle. Surah Al-Fil explains the story of Abraha and his army of elephants who wanted to destroy the Kaaba. 
Abraha and his army mounted on elephants and made their way towards Mecca to destroy the Kaaba. Allah the Almighty destroyed the army by sending birds which dropped rocks made of clay on them while they were flying. I learned from this great surah that Allah is the most powerful and he has the power to stop a big army of elephants with just some birds and small stones. Subhanallah, that's remarkable. Subhanallah, it is so amazing how Allah used the birds to protect the Kaaba from being destroyed. The Quran has so many wonderful stories to read and learn from. Did you know that for every letter you recite from the Qur'an, you receive 10 hasanat? These are rewards Allah gives us when we do good deeds. Surah Al-Fil has 115 letters, so by just reciting that surah, you are rewarded 1,150 hasanat. Ooh for the next surah, we will go to my friend Aziza who lives in South Africa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Aziza and I am from South Africa. Here in South Africa, we have almost 1 million Muslims. South Africa is a beautiful country to visit. You can go on a safari to see the famous Big Five. They are the lion, leopard, African elephant, rhinosaurus and buffalo. Allah has created so many beautiful animals, subhanAllah. In my country, lots of young children have memorized parts of the Quran. Some have even memorized the entire Qur'an, which is amazing to know because the Qur'an contains 114 chapters and over 6,000 verses, subhanAllah. My parents have taught me lots of surahs from the Qur'an. We enjoy learning the Qur'an together as a family. I recently learned and memorized Surah Al-Humaza. Al-Humaza means the slanderer. This surah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mecca. I will now recite Surah Al-Humaza. Okay, and again, let's try our best to recite along with her. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعدد يحسب أن ماله أخلد كلا لا ينبذن في الحتمة وما أدراك ما الحتمة نار الله المكدة التي تتلع على العفيدة إنها عليهم مؤسدة the meaning of this surah is Woe to every person who says bad things about others in their face and behind their back, who gathers money and counts it over and over again. He thinks that his money will remain with him forever. No, never. He will be thrown into the crushing fire. 
And how would you know what the crushing fire is? It is the burning fire of Allah, which rages over their hearts. It is closed around them from every side, in columns that are stretched out. Surah Al-Humaza teaches us about the things that Allah does not love us to do. It also warns us of the punishment if we do such bad things. That's why we love the Quran. I learned that Allah does not love those who say bad things about others and those who love money so much that it distracts them from worshipping Allah. Allah explains that these people will be punished in the fires of hell. Reciting this surah always reminds me to speak good of others and not to be greedy for money. I love to give some of my money to those who are poor and hungry as I will receive many rewards in return, insha'Allah. Allah reminds us so many times in the Qur'an that we should be generous and charitable with our money. We should always say Alhamdulillah, whether we have a little or a lot of money. Thank you Aziza for reminding us of this important message. Next, my friend Umar from North America will teach us Surah Al-Ma'oon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Omar and I'm from the United States of America. The USA is a very big country and we have over 7 million Muslims here. Many Americans are becoming Muslim, alhamdulillah. The Qur'an has been one of the reasons why. The Qur'an is very easy to understand and it has been translated into so many languages including English, Chinese, German, French, and Malay. Malaysia, China, Australia, America, India, Japan, Indonesia, France. The Quran has many miracles in it. Pakistan, South Africa. One of the miracles in the Quran is in Surah number 51 called Adhariyat. In verse number 47, Allah mentions that the universe is expanding. This was discovered around 1300 years after the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, how amazing the Quran is! I have learned and memorized Surah Al Ma'un at school today. Al Ma'un means small kindness. This surah was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Mecca. I will now recite Surah Al Ma'un. Are you ready to recite along with him? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَى تَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ Have you seen the one who calls the judgment a lie? 
That is the one who treats the orphan with harshness and does not urge others to feed the poor. So woe to those who pray, those who are neglectful of their prayers, those who do good deeds only to be seen by others, and withhold simple assistance. I have learned three things from Surah Tol Ma'un. The first is that we must help orphans and not treat them badly. Secondly, we must feed the poor and hungry. And lastly, it is very important to pray on time and not delay the prayer. When we pray, we must not rush and try to concentrate in our prayer. And we must pray only for Allah and not for showing off to others. I love this surah. It has made me a better person, alhamdulillah. It teaches me everything I need to know. Thank you, Omar. We are learning so much today, aren't we? And we have only studied five short surahs from the Qur'an. The Qur'an has 114 chapters in it. Some of them are long and some of them are short. So just imagine how much you can learn from the entire Qur'an. Now for the next surah, we will go to Bangladesh where my friend Aisha lives. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Aisha and I am from Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, we have over 100 million Muslims. I love the Quran. Many Muslims read and learn the Quran in my country. It has taught us to be tolerant and kind to people from other religions. My favorite verses in the Quran are those that explain in detail what Jannah is like. Jannah is such a wonderful place and it has been promised to those who do good deeds and stay away from doing bad things. I always try to do a lot of good deeds such as praying on time, reading Quran every day, fasting, being good to my parents and neighbours, helping the poor, and also learning more about Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that inshallah I may enter Jannah. Surah al gawthar is my favourite surah because it was the first surah my mother taught me. Did you know it is also the shortest surah in the Qur'an? Surah al gawthar was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in Mecca. al gawthar is a water fountain that Allah has gifted to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment when the sun will be burning hot and everyone will be so thirsty. It is from this special fountain that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will quench the thirst of his ummah and we will drink from his hands inshallah. al Qafar is also a river in Jannah. She loves the Quran. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about al qafar It is a river which Allah has granted me in paradise. Its earth is mass and its water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. Subhanallah, how lovely that sounds. I will now recite Surah al qafar Let's all try our best to recite with her. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
inna a'tayna kal kawthar fa salli li rabbika wanhar inna shani'aka huwal abtar the meaning of this surah is Verily, we have granted you the Ghafar, so pray only to your Lord and sacrifice. For he who hates you will be cut off from good things in this world and the hereafter. Surah al kafar has taught me that we should love our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dearly. And those who do not love the Prophet will have all good things taken away from them. When I recite Surah al qafar I become very happy because it reminds me of Jannah and encourages me to do good deeds so that inshallah one day I may drink from the beautiful hands of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and smell the delightful scent of musk in Jannah. Thank you Aisha. Jannah sounds like such a wonderful place. We have learned so much today, haven't we? I hope my friends from around the world have taught you a lot from the Qur'an. There are many other short surahs we can learn, but we will leave that for another time, insha'Allah. Dear Yusuf, thank you for writing to me. I hope you enjoyed learning some of the short surahs from the Qur'an with us today. Learning and teaching the Qur'an is so rewarding. It's best to read Qur'an every day, which will help you memorize the Qur'an easier. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Your friend, Zaki. Did you have a good day today? Good night, child. Time to say your dua. Good night, child. We run before you sleep. Good night, child. Assalamu alaikum. Close your eyes and you may see Muhammad. Muhammad in your dream. Guess what the animal It's a sheep. That looks like a goat. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? It's quiz time with Zaki! In which of these countries do people mainly speak Arabic? Is it A. North America or B. China or is it C. Lebanon? The answer is C. 
Lebanon. In which of these countries are kangaroos and koalas found? Is it A. Egypt or B. Australia or is it C. Germany? The answer is B. Australia. Which of these countries is not part of Asia? Is it A. Brazil or B. Malaysia or is it C. China? The answer is A. Brazil. Brazil is part of South America. What is the largest Muslim country in the world? Is it A. Nigeria or is it B. Pakistan or is it C. Indonesia? The answer is C. Indonesia. In which city was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam born? Is it A. Medina? B. Yathrib or is it C. Mecca? The answer is C. Mecca. How many surahs or chapters does the Quran have? Is it A. 110, B. 113 or is it C. 114? The answer is C. 114. In which month was the Quran first revealed? Is it A, Muharram, or is it B, Ramadan, or is it C, Shawwal? The answer is B, Ramadan. What was the first word revealed from the Quran? Is it A, Salah, is it B, Ikra, or is it C, Al-Fatiha? The answer is B, Ikra. I hope you all did well in the quiz. If you didn't, that's okay. You can try again insha'Allah. How about we now watch my video clip of the song Ramadan. Hope you enjoy it. Ramadan is the month of mercy. Ramadan is the month of fasting. Ramadan is the month of giving and helping those in need. Ramadan is the month of the Quran, the month in which it first came down. To Buffer and Muhammad in year 16, a guide for all mankind. Ramadan for fasting, for giving, Ramadan for praying. Be patient, Ramadan, forgiving and feeding, Ramadan, we love you, oh Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of patience, Ramadan is the month of sacrifice, Ramadan is the month of praying in the mosque for Tarawih. Ramadan is such a fruitful month for gaining lots of hasanah. The devils are chained and Jahannam is locked for all of Ramadan. We don't eat food. No. We don't lose our temper. No. We don't drink anything. No. We don't sleep all day. No. We read Quran. Yes. We pray a lot. Yes. We help the poor. Yes. We increase our faith. Yes. In Ramadan. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. Ramadan, 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 Ramad
Madonna, 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 Madonna. One for Kids online store. Check out our range of fun and educational Zaki and Friends products your children will love. There's the world famous Zaki talking and singing toy, Zaki's Arabic pack, cloud pillow, plush toys, and more. For Ramadan, we have the new Ramadan show bag and the Ramadan educational pack. Our products are designed to keep your children entertained while learning about their deen. Purchase online now. Shop.oneforkids.net. We thank you for your support. Assalamu alaikum boys and girls. Are you ready to continue learning more surahs from the Quran? Well, how about we go to my friends from around the world to learn more about the Quran and other interesting facts. My first friend is Halima from China. I love the Quran. I love the Quran. Because it teaches me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Halima and I am from China. Here in China, we have over 60 million Muslims. But some people with knowledge say that there could be close to 200 million Muslims. SubhanAllah! This makes us amongst the largest Muslim countries in the world. I'm full of love, I'm full of life, give thanks for my smile. I do what's right, feels good inside, I'm filled with delight. Cause Allah is by my side. And the Prophet's my guide. Islam came to China through Muslim sellers way back in the year 681 AD. That's about 70 years after the Qur'an was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, there are over 3,500 mosques all over China. Many children come to the mosque to learn and memorize the Qur'an. Did you know that here in China, we had the largest war in the world? It is known as the Great War of China. The war stretches over 8,000 kilometers. You should come and visit us to see it, inshallah. She loves the Quran. Surah An-Nasr is a very interesting surah, which I learned from my older brother. It was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the Battle of Mecca, when Allah gave victory to the Muslims. This was a very happy time for the Prophet because he loved Mecca so much. It was here in Mecca that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born, and where the Quran was first revealed to him. 
Surah An-Nasr was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina. I will now recite Surah An-Nasr. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Idha jaa nasrullahi wal fath wa ra'aita an-nas yadkhuluna fi dinillahi afwaja fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wastaghfir innahu kana tawwaba The meaning of surah an-nasr is when the victory of Allah has come and the conquest and you see the people entering into Allah's religion in crowds. Then glorify the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. Indeed, he is ever accepting of repentance. From this surah, I have learned that if you are close to Allah and have patience, then you will never lose. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through a lot of hardship while trying to bring Islam to his people. However, he never gave up and stayed patient and relied on Allah. Eventually, Allah gave him victory. I also learned the importance of asking Allah for forgiveness. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a prophet and only did what Allah was pleased with. Yet, he still asked Allah for forgiveness every day. May Allah forgive me for my sins. Ameen. China sounds like a fascinating place to visit. The Great Wall of China must have taken such a long time to build. Did you know that China has the largest population in the world with over 1.3 billion people? Many in China ride their bikes to work. This is a great way to stay active and fit. Now let's go to my friend Ali from Egypt. I love the Quran, I love the Quran because it teaches me everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ali and I am from Egypt. Egypt has around 80 million Muslims and has been the land of many prophets such as Musa and Yusuf alayhi salam. In my country there are many famous places such as the pyramids and the Nile River. The Nile River is the largest river in the world. Most Egyptians live near the Nile River because it provides water, transportation and excellent soil for growing food. People from all over the world come to Egypt to study and memorize the Quran. <laughs> Being able to memorize over 6,000 verses is one of the great miracles of the Qur'an. And I am so thankful to Allah that I have been able to do this. Alhamdulillah. Surah Al-Masad was revealed about Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Lahab used to be very cruel to him and his wife also joined her husband in making the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam suffer. She used to throw thorns along the path where the Prophet walked. Surah Al-Masad was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. I will now recite Surah Al-Masad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب 
وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد The meaning of Surat Al-Masad is Perish are the hands of Abu Lahab and doomed is he. His wealth and his children will not benefit him. He will be burnt in a fire of blazing flames and his wife too, the carrier of wood. Around her neck will be a rope of twisted palm fiber. Surat Al-Masad teaches us a serious lesson. Allah punishes those who abuse or harm Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will punish Abu Lahab and his wife in hellfire because they were very cruel to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and rejected his message. Another lesson I have learnt is that despite people being cruel to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never became angry or abusive to them. Rather, he stayed patient and made dua that Allah would guide those who were not Muslim. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such a loving, caring and generous person. I want to be just like him, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Nuruddin and I live in Malaysia. Malaysia has over 10 million Muslims and Islam is our official religion. In Malaysia, we have lots of beautiful islands. One of the islands I love the most is called Sabah. There you can find the largest flower in the world called Rafflesia. And it is magnificent, tabarakallah. We also have lots of yummy tropical fruits such as guava, watermelon, papaya and dragon fruit. Malaysia is blessed with vibrant tropical weather which allows a wide variety of delicious fruits to grow. I'm feeling calm, I'm feeling good, just like a Muslim should. Like a Muslim and should. every day, in every way, I feel true. I began memorizing the Quran at the age of four. Alhamdulillah, I have nearly memorized the entire Quran now. One of the surahs I first learned was Surah Al-Kafirun. It was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. Al-Kafirun means the disbelievers. The Qur'an was revealed over a period of 23 years, in Mecca for 13 years and 10 years in Medina. I will now recite Surat Al-Kafirun. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ the meaning of Surah Al-Kafirun is Say to the disbelievers I do not worship that which you worship And you will not worship that which I worship And I will not worship that which you are worshipping Nor will you worship that which I worship For you is your religion and for me is mine he loves the Quran. Surat Al-Kafirun has taught me that Islam is a tolerant religion and does not force anyone to practice it except for those who choose to. I love to give da'wah to others and invite them to Islam. You get so many rewards if they accept your invitation and become Muslims. You even get rewarded just for giving da'wah. The surah also teaches me that we must stay firm in our belief and worship Allah. 
And we cannot mix our belief with the belief of other religions, such as imitating the disbelievers in their acts of worship. I love learning Allah's beautiful words from the Quran. They make me feel so at ease. Malaysia is one of my favourite countries to visit. Did you know that the largest city and capital of Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur? I have so many friends in Kuala Lumpur and I can't wait to go back there inshallah so I can eat some yummy fruits. Now let's go to England where my friend Khadija lives. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hadija and I am from England. England is part of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has over two and a half million Muslims, many of which are new Muslims, just like my mother. My mother accepted Islam when she was a young teenager after reading the Quran, Alhamdulillah. She now teaches Quran at my school. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The best among you is he who learns the Quran and teaches it. When I grow up, inshallah, I also want to become a teacher. Surah Al-Ikhlas is an easy surah to learn and memorize. It's only four short verses. Allah revealed Surah Al-Ikhlas to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca after the idol worshippers asked him, O oh Muhammad, tell us the family tree of your Lord. So Allah revealed Surah Al-Ikhlas to explain to them that Allah has no family tree. He is only one and has always been this way. SubhanAllah. I will now recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد The meaning of Surah Al-Ikhlas is Say He is Allah, the one and only Allah the self-sufficient he does not give birth, nor was he born, and there is nothing that can be compared to him. Although Surah Al-Ikhlas is a short surah, it explains so much about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It teaches us that Allah is the only one that can be worshipped, and he does not have a son, a daughter, or any partner. He can't be compared to anything in this world that we know. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Surah Al-Ikhlas is equal to one third of the Quran. This is because its message is so important in Islam and it symbolizes a Muslim's true belief in Allah. So by reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, you get the reward of reciting the entire Quran. Isn't that amazing? I love the Quran, I love the Quran, because it teaches me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmed and I am from Morocco. Morocco is located on the west coast of Africa. We have over 35 million people here, from which 99% are Muslims. My country has many beautiful historical and natural sites. Throughout history, a variety of empires have been present here, such as the Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, and Islamic Empire. Did you know that the highest mineral in the world is here in Morocco, 
in the city of Casablanca. It is part of the Hassan II Mosque and it is 210 meters high. In Morocco, you can hear the Quran being recited from the mosques on a loudspeaker, which is such a beautiful sound to hear five times every day. My older brother has memorized the entire Quran. He leads the Taraweeh prayer in Ramadan and recites many chapters. He has such a lovely voice and recites slowly and beautifully, which sounds so wonderful. Subhanallah. Surah Al-Falaq was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina, which is known as the city of the Prophet. It is the city where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to in the year 622. The men who travelled with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Hijrah were called the Muhajirun, meaning those that made the Hijrah. This Hijrah event is what began the first year of the Islamic calendar. I will now recite Surah Al Falaq. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر قاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ The meaning of Surah Al-Falaq is Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn and from the evil of everything he has created and from the evil of the darkness when it comes and from the evil of those who practice witchcraft and the evil of the envious person when he envies I have learned from Surah Al-Falaq that it is very important to ask for the protection of Allah from all evil things such as magic and the evil eye. Before I go to bed, I blow gently into my hands and recite Surahs Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq and Al-Nas and then wipe my hands over my head and body. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to do this three times before we go to bed every night and it will protect us until the next morning insha'Allah. Thank you Ahmed for reminding us of this important message. Yes, it is very important to always recite Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq and Al-Nas three times each before you sleep at night. You should also recite Ayat Al-Kursi and say SubhanAllah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times and Allahu Akbar 34 times. Then you say the dua for sleeping, Bismik Allahumma Amutu Wa Ahya. It is very good to make wudu before you sleep and remember to always try and sleep on your right. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sarah and I'm from Bosnia. Bosnia is a small country and has over 1 million Muslims. My country is very beautiful with many lush landscapes and mountains, but it can get very cold in the winter. During the cold evenings, my sisters and I cuddle up in warm blankets and my father tells us great stories about the prophets from the Qur'an. The Qur'an contains so many wonderful stories to learn about. My favourite story is the story of Prophet Yusuf salam, which is known as the best story in the Qur'an. 
Surah An-Nas is the last surah in the Quran. The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was 40 years old in the cave of Hira. Did you know the first word revealed to him was Iqra, which means read or recite? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised us to read Quran as much as we can to gain rewards and strengthen our iman. I love reciting the Quran. It makes me feel so warm and close to Allah, my Creator. I will now recite Surah An-Nas. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Malikin nas. Ilahin nas. Min sharril waswasil khannas. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. Min al jinnati wan nas. The meaning of this surah is Say I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind, from the evil of the sneaky whisperer who whispers into the hearts of mankind, from among the jinn and mankind. Surah An-Nas reminds me to always ask for protection of Allah from shaitan, the devil. Shaitan always whispers evil thoughts and ideas into our hearts and minds to try and make us do bad things. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that during our sleep, shaitan ties three knots at the back of our heads and he whispers to us at each knot, the night is long so keep on sleeping. If we wake up and say alhamdulillah, then one of the knots is undone. When we perform wudu, the second knot is undone. And when we perform fajr salah, all three knots are undone. So we get up in the morning feeling lovely and bright. If we don't do this every morning to pray Fajr Salah, then we will get up feeling dull and depressed. I love the Quran, I love the Quran, because it teaches me everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mustafa and I am from France. Alhamdulillah. France has over 6 million Muslims. It is the fastest growing religion here and in Europe. Many people who read the Quran are touched by the words of Allah and are guided to the beautiful religion of Islam. Subhanallah. Did you know that France is the number one tourist destination in the world? France has many other famous places to visit. Most people come to France to see the Eiffel Tower, which is in the city of Paris. You should come to France and visit us, inshallah. Surah Al-Fatiha was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca, and it is the first chapter in the Quran. It is also the first surah I learned where my parents were teaching me how to pray. Surah Al-Fatiha is the most recited surah in the world because we recite it at least 17 times a day during our five daily prayers. Our prayer is not complete unless we recite Al-Fatiha in each raka'ah. He loves the Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdin Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Amin. The meaning of this surah is In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe 
the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have guided and not the path of those who have earned your anger and not the path of those whom you have led astray. When I recite Al-Fatiha, it reminds me that Allah is very merciful, kind and forgiving. It also reminds me about the Day of Judgment when we will all stand before Allah and be asked about every little thing we did in our life. If we stayed on the right path by obeying Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we will enter Jannah and stay there forever, insha'Allah. However, if we were on the wrong path and did not obey Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we will be punished in hellfire for our sins. Thank you Mustafa and all my friends from around the world for teaching us about the Qur'an and interesting facts about your country. Al-Qur'an is full of wonderful stories and lessons for us to learn. We should spend a lot of time studying and memorizing the Qur'an so that we can benefit in our lives and also teach others. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Assalamu alaikum. It's a parrot. It's a turtle. It's a bear. It's a horse. It's a kangaroo. It's a koala. Time it is? It's quiz time with Zaki. Which country has the largest population in the world? Is it A. Malaysia, B. China, or is it C. India? The answer is B. China. Surah Al Ikhlas is equal to A. One half of the Quran. B. One quarter of the Qur'an or is it C? One third of the Qur'an The answer is C One third of the Qur'an Which is the first surah in the Qur'an? Is it A. Al-Baqarah B. Al-Fatiha or is it C. An-Nas The answer is B. Al-Fatiha which is the last surah in the Qur'an? Is it A. Al-Ikhlas or B. Al-Falak or is it C. An-Nas? The answer is C. An-Nas. How old was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Qur'an was first revealed to him? Is it A. 40 years old? Is it B. 
25 years old? Or is it C, 50 years old? The answer is A, 40 years old. Where was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when the Quran was first revealed to him? Is it A, inside the Kaaba? Is it B, in the cave of Hira? Or is it C, in his house? The answer is B, in the cave of Hira. The Quran contains the words of A, Prophet Muhammad or B, Prophet Adam alayhi salam or is it C, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The answer is C, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by which angel? Is it A, Jibreel alayhi salam? Is it B, Mikael alayhi salam? Or is it C, Malik alayhi salam. The answer is A. Jibreel alayhi salam. Which surah is recited in every rak'ah of our salat? Is it A. Al Fatiha or B. Al Ikhlas or is it C. Al Nasr? The answer is A. Al Fatiha. How many times a day? Do we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in our five daily prayers? Is it A, at least seven times? Or B, at least 17 times? Or is it C, at least 37 times? The answer is B, at least 17 times. That's what Muhammad said And I always feel the bone Cause that's what Muhammad said Be nice to my father That's what Muhammad said Better to my mother That's what Muhammad said Respect to my others That's what Muhammad said And good to my neighbors That's what Muhammad said And never lose my temper That's what Muhammad said Smiling is much better That's what Muhammad said Muhammad came to guide us And what a perfect teacher Whenever the name of Prophet Muhammad is mentioned, we must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
reach out, sleep tight Ask a lot to forgive you Good night child And you should forgive others too Good night child Don't forget to sleep on your right Good night child Close your eyes and you may see Muhammad Muhammad In your dreams Good night, child. We're learning the Arabic alphabet so we can read and learn Al-Qur'an, Al-Qur'an The language of al beloved Muhammad, the last prophet sent from Allah, from Allah It goes Alif, Bata, Sa, Chib, Ha, Ha, Dal, Dal, Rosa, Sin, Shin, Son, Dor, Do Ein Rein Verkauf Kaf Lam Mim Nun He Wow Yeah We're learning the Arabic alphabet so we can read and learn Al Quran, Al Quran, the language of Al Bilal and Muhammad, the last prophet sent from Allah, from Allah. Alif is for Allah. For Bismillah, Ta is for Taqwa, and Ta for Thawab. Jim is for Jannah, Ha is for Hajj, Ha is for Khalid, and Da for Dawood. Dal is for Zahab, Ra for Ramadan, Zain is for Zakat, and Sin for Salam. Salam. We're learning the Arabic alphabet so we can read and learn Al Quran, Al Quran, the language of Al Bilal and Muhammad, the last prophet sent from Allah, from Allah. Shin is for Shams and Sad is for Song. Thad is for Daif and Ta for Tahara. Da is for the for Ibadah, Khain is for Ghafoor, and Fa is for Fatiha. Qaf is for Quran, Kaf is for Kitab, Lam is for Latif, and Mim is for Medina. Nun is for Nam, Ha is for Hidayah, Wow is for Wajud, and Ya is for Yawmuti. We're learning the Arabic alphabet so we can read and learn Al Quran, Al Quran, the language of Al Bilal and Muhammad, the last prophet sent from Allah, from Allah. Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Shin, Ha, Ha, Dal, Dal, Rosa, Sin, Shin, Son, Do, 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 Ain, Ain, Fa. Oh, 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 oh,
Assalamu alaikum. I hope you are all well, inshallah. You know, I get lots of letters from children wanting to learn Arabic. Did you know that Arabic is the language that the Quran was revealed in and also the language that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke? Arabic is an easy and fun language to learn. My friends and I would love to teach you the Arabic alphabet. Let's learn Arabic with Zaki. Alif is for Allah. Allah is the creator of the universe. He created humans, animals, the beautiful oceans, the shining sun and beautiful sky, the beautiful flowers and plants and everything you can imagine. Alif is for Allah. Ba is for Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. We say Bismillah before we do almost anything, such as before eating or drinking. Ba is for Bismillah. Da is for Tawba. Tawba means repentance, which is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness when we have done something wrong. When you make Tawba, you promise Allah to keep away from the bad deed that you have done and admit that it was wrong to do it. Da is for Tawba. Tha is for Thawb, a traditional robe that many Muslim men wear around the world. I see many Muslim men wearing a Thawb at the Masjid. Tha is for Thawb. Jim is for Jannah, an amazing garden in paradise for people who do good deeds. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam describes Jannah as having beautiful smelling plants and flowers, a flowing river, delicious fruits and a place where you are always happy. There are different levels of Jannah and the highest is Jannah to Firdaus. Jim is for Jannah. So those are the first five letters of the Arabic alphabet. Are you all finding it easy? I told you it was fun. Let's continue on. Ha is for Hajj, one of the five pillars of Islam. As Muslims, we must go to Mecca for Hajj at least once in our lives if we are able to. Did you know the Kaaba was built by Prophet Ibrahim salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam and it is also known as Baytullah, which means the house of Allah. Ha is for Hajj. Kha is for Khair, meaning goodness. The more Khair we do, the more Thawab we gain, and the closer we are to entering Jannah and meeting Allah. Khair means doing something that is right, such as being a good host to your guests, or assisting the orphans, or simply picking up anything harmful. When we do a good deed, it wipes away some bad deeds that we have done in the past. Dal is for dua. During dua, you can ask Allah for anything, such as making us better Muslims or helping someone that is sick. Allah promises that your dua will be answered and that your wishes will be granted, either in this life or the hereafter. Remember Allah by making dua during both the good times and the bad. Every single day I play outside, so I keep my body healthy running around in the sun. I play and it feels so good because sun provides my vitamin D.
Making dua is very important. Allah says in the Quran, Call on me and I will answer your prayers. Let's continue on to the next letter. Dal is for dhikr, which means remembering Allah. There is nothing greater than the remembrance of Allah. I love to make tasbih throughout my day. Whether you are at school, in the car, or with your friends, you should make tasbih by saying, Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wala ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. You can use your fingers to keep count just like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Did you know that reciting Quran is also a form of dhikr? Dal is for dhikr. Ra is for the beautiful month of Ramadan. During Ramadan, we fast from Fajr to Maghrib for 29 or 30 days. During this very special month, Shaitan is locked up so we cannot blame our bad deeds on him. In Ramadan, all the good deeds we do, such as praying, reading Quran and giving charity are multiplied up to 700 times. Ra for Ramadan. Zain is for Zakat. Zakat means giving money to the poor, orphans and those in need. Giving money to others helps us remember all we have and not to take our blessings for granted. It also reminds us that there are always people less fortunate than us who have less than us. As Muslims, we must care about our brothers and sisters in Islam. And giving zakat is one way of doing that. Zain is for zakat. Sin is for sunnah, which is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do or say. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray extra prayers before and after the five daily prayers. So doing this is called sunnah. Sin is for sunnah. Sheen is for a shahada, the first and most important pillar of Islam. Shahada means believing that only Allah deserves to be worshipped and that He has no partners. It also means accepting that Muhammad وسلم, was the last messenger of Allah. When a person becomes a Muslim, they must make shahada to declare their faith. We also make shahada every day during salah and after making wudu by saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Sheen is for a shahada. Sod is for psalm, which means fasting. When we fast, we not only keep away from food and drink, we also keep our tongues clean by not raising our voice, swearing or becoming angry. We also keep our minds pure by remembering Allah and avoiding bad thoughts. Fasting brings us closer to Allah and increases our faith by ridding us from bad habits and replacing them with good manners and practices. Sod is for Psalm. Dod is for Duha, which is the period between when the sun has completely risen up to midday. My friend Mustafa goes to the masjid with his father for Fajr prayer. After they pray Fajr, they read Quran until it's Duha time and then pray the Duha prayer. Prophet Muhammad said, Whoever sits in the masjid after the Fajr, 
remembering Allah until the sun rises above the horizon and then he prays two rak'at, then he will get the reward of Hajj and Umrah complete, complete, complete. Dad is for Duha. Ta is for Tahara, which means cleanliness. As Muslims, we must always be clean. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that being clean is one half of your faith. So it is very important that we always clip our nails, trim unwanted hair from our bodies, brush our teeth, shower regularly, wear clean clothes and keep our rooms nice and tidy. Dark is for Tahara. Dhah is for Dhuhr, the second prayer of our five daily prayers. On Friday, Usman goes to the masjid for Jum'ah at Dhuhr time. Before the Friday prayer, the Imam gives a khutbah or talk, which is followed by two units of prayer, instead of the usual four units for Dhuhr. Did you know that when you pray with others at the masjid, you receive 27 times more hasanat or good deeds compared to praying by yourself. Dha is for dhuhr. Did you know that Friday is the most important day of the week? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best day on which the sun has risen is Friday. On that day, Prophet Adam salam, was created. He was sent to live in paradise and he was taken out from there. Ain is for Eid, which we celebrate twice a year. The first is Eid al Fitr, which marks the end of Ramadan. The second celebration, Eid al Adha, is celebrated on the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah, the month for performing Hajj. On both Eids, we pray a special prayer called Salatul Eid early in the morning. In the time of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, men, women and children used to pray Salatul Eid. Eid is the perfect time to give gifts and have a party. Ain is for Eid. Ain is for Al Ghaffar, one of Allah's many beautiful names. Al Ghaffar means the forgiver. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive our sins. Allah loves those who ask for His forgiveness. Is for Al Ghaffar. Where are you headed? Turn to Allah, that's the best. Cause He is there wherever you are. Fa is for Fajr, the first of the five daily prayers. Fajr is prayed from the beginning of dawn before the sun rises. Prophet Muhammad said the two Sunnah prayers before Fajr are better than the whole world and all it contains. Fa is for Fajr. Qaf is for Al-Qur'an, the holy book that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Qur'an was revealed in Arabic and that is why learning Arabic is very important. There are many inventions in this world that were discovered through the teachings of the Qur'an, such as architecture, astronomy and medicine. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? As a Muslim man, a teacher is what I want to be. People will come. Qaf is for Al-Qur'an. Science and history. history. And I'll teach Qur'an. Kaf is for Kitab, which means book. Every day, 
we learn many new things from books that are written about science, maths, and geography. I love reading storybooks at night, especially the stories of the prophets and companions. My favorite kitab in the world is Al Quran. Did you know that another name for Al Quran is Kitabullah, which means the Book of Allah? Night child, sleep tight, ask Allah to forgive you. Good night child, when you should forgive. Kaf is for Kitab. Good night child, don't forget to sleep. Isn't it fun learning Arabic? Let's see what letter is next. Lam is for Laylatul Qadr, which means the night of decree. Laylatul Qadr was the night that the glorious Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Laylatul Qadr falls in one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. During this night, you get the reward of worshipping Allah for 1000 months, which is equal to about 83 years. We should try our best to read a lot of Quran, make dua, and stand in prayer most of the night. Lamb is for Laylatul Qadr. Mim is for Masjid, known as the House of Allah. This is a place where Muslims gather to pray, learn about Islam, and have different events. Apart from the five daily prayers, Muslims go to the Masjid to pray the Jum'ah prayer on Fridays, Eid prayers, and Taraweeh prayers in Ramadan. What do you do at your local Masjid? Meme is for Masjid. Noon is for Noor, which means light. Did you know that angels are made from light? SubhanAllah! Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created angels to worship and obey Him. There are many different angels that each have a special job from Allah. As I stood up on the Noon top, is for Noor. Ha, Al Hadi. One of Allah's beautiful names is Al Hadi, which means the guide. We ask Allah for guidance every day in our five daily prayers when we recite Al Fatiha. We say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, which means, Guide us, O Allah, on the right path. Hat is for Al Hadi. Wow is for Wudu, which involves washing different parts of your body to prepare for Salah. Making Wudu helps us to stay clean throughout the day and washes our sins away. We make wudu every day before prayer, which means we are always clean, insha'Allah. Wow is for al wudu. Yeah is for Yawmul Qiyamah, which means Judgment Day. On Judgment Day, we will all be either rewarded for our good deeds or punished for our bad deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose whether we deserve to enter Jannah, the beautiful garden of paradise, or hellfire. We must do as many good deeds as we can in this life so that we can enter Jannah forever, insha'Allah. What will you do on Judgment Day? What will you think? What will you so there you have it, we have just learned all 28 letters of the Arabic alphabet. How about we go through the letters again? We're learning the Arabic alphabet. Alif Ba Ta Tha Jim Ha Kh 
טל ז' ר זין סין שין סוד טוב Zayn 
Zijn zeitonen, which is olives. Zarafatun, which is a giraffe. Zirun, which is a button. Sin. Sin, sayaratun, which is a car. Sin saatun, which is a watch. Samaun, which is a sky. Sheen. Sheen is for Shamsun, which is the sun. Shajaratun, tree. Shayakhun, elder. Saad. Saad is for Siratun, which is a path. Sabunun, which is soap. Sufun, which is wool. Taad. Taad, Tiftaatun, which is a frog. Dabitun, which is an officer. Dabarun, which is a hyena. Ta. Ta is for Tiflun, which is a child. Tabibun, which is a doctor. Ta'amun, which is food. Va. Va is for Darfun, which is an envelope. Dillun, which is shade. Zufrun, fingernail. Ain. Ain is for Ainun, which is an eye. Akrabun, scorpion. Hinabun, grapes. Ain. Rain is for Ghurabun, which is a crow. Ghamamun, which means clouds. Ghassalatun, which is a washing machine. Fa. Fa for Firashun, which is a mattress. Fa'run, which is a mouse. Filun, which is an elephant. Kaf. Kaf, Kamarun, which is the moon. Kadamun, which is a foot. Kalamun, which is a pen. Kaf Kaf Kursiyun which is a chair Kalbun which is a dog Karazun cherries Lamb Laylun night Lu'un, pearls. Lebanon, yoga. Mim. Mim, maujun, which is waves. Mazun, which means goats. Miftahun, which is a key. 
Noon. Noon, Nahlatun, which is a bay. Nahrun, which is a river. Namlatun, which is an ant. Ha. Ha. Hatifun, which is a telephone. Hiratun, which is a cat. Hilalun, present moon. Wow. Wow. Waladun, which is a boy. Wardatun, rose. Wazzatun, which is a goose. Ya. Ya, Yamamatun, which is a dove. Yadun, which is a hand. Yachtun, which is a yacht. Guess what the animal is? In Arabic. Bakaratun. It's a cow. Timsahun A crocodile A A dove An elephant. Zipbun. Wolf. Divdatun. Frog. Marzun I go Robun I cry A fox. What's that one? A goose. Let's now learn the Arabic numbers. The Arabic numbers. Let's count together. واحد واحد اثنان اثنان واحد اثنان ثلاثة ثلاثة واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة أربعة واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة خمسة واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة ستة واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة 
سبعة واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية ثمانية واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة تسعة واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة عشرة عشرة واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة عشرة How many carrots can you see? واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة Four carrots How many ice creams can you see? واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية There are eight ice creams. Yummy! How many fish can you see? واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة There are five fish. How many strawberries can you see? واحد اثنين ثلاثة There are three strawberries. How many oranges can you see? واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة There are six oranges. We've learned the Arabic letters, lots of Arabic words, and the Arabic numbers. Now let's learn the colors in Arabic. Ahmar, the color of the cherry is red. In Arabic, it's Ahmar. Asfar, the color of the banana is yellow. In Arabic, it's Asfar. Bunni, the color of Kazwa is brown. In Arabic, it is Bunni. Azraq, the color of Abdul Rahman's shirt is blue. In Arabic, it is Azraq. Abyad, the color of Omar's kufi is white. In Arabic, it is Abyad. Aswad. The color of the crow is black. In Arabic, it is Aswad. Portugali. The color of the orange is orange. In Arabic, it is Portugali. Akhdar. The color of the grass is green. In Arabic, it is Akhdar. Ahmar. Asfar. Akhdar. Azraq. Bunni. Aswad. Abyad Portugali I hope all of you watching have enjoyed and benefited today. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Until next time insha'Allah, Assalamu Alaikum
Allah, what a beautiful day for fishing. Sure is, Kaz. Inshallah, we catch some fish. I wonder how that got there. up ahead. Hold on tight. This way, Kazwa. Uh, uh, are we safe? Looks like it. I think he needs our help. <laughs> Run! This dangerous, Zeki. Next time, be careful where you toss your fishing line. I don't think there'll be a next time. Look under the ocean, what do you see? Lots and lots of fish, so beautiful to see. Look, there's a turtle, look, there's a stingray, look, there's a seahorse, yellow and green. Do you ever wonder who created this and who created that? Allah created the oceans. Big blue whales and octopus too, an eel. A shark, swim in the deep blue. Look, there's a green fish. Look, there's a blue fish. Look, there's a yellow fish. So many to see. Do you ever wonder who created this and who created that? Allah created the oceans. Look at the starfish. Red, pink and blue. Isn't it amazing? For me and for you. Look at the seahorse swimming away. So many beautiful creatures 
Look and you'll see. Do you ever wonder who created this and who created that? Allah created the oceans. Lots and lots of fish. Subhanallah. I can see a crab. Subhanallah. I can see a seal. Subhanallah. And a sea turtle too. Subhanallah. Do you ever wonder who created this and who created that? Allah created the oceans. Big beautiful oceans. <laughs> Why did you let them get the ball? I tripped on a rock. Anyway, it was your plan to make me run backwards. How was I supposed to see where I was running? Okay, this time I'll wait for you to kick the ball forward and then run forward to catch it. Okay, stop celebrating. We know you're winning. Hurry up and take the kickoff. We only have one minute left of the match. notice if we leave the ball here? Of course he will notice. It has your name on it, silly. Zaki, we gotta go. Rashid is very scared of bees. Don't worry, Harun. We'll take care of it. Okay, we'll continue the game another day, inshallah. 
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام We can use some of the tree sap on this tree to glue it back together. I'll do it. You look out for Bilal. There we go. Perfect. Oh no, there's Bilal now. Oh no. Let's get out of here, Zeki. Run for your life, Kazwa! Kaz, Bilal is coming for you again. Hurry up, Zeki! He's catching up to us! Uh. Hold on tight, Kazwa! Catching up again. I can't seem to go faster. Do you think he's gone? Um, he's right behind you. What? Wh wh where? Relax, Kazwa. He's not awake. <laughs> I've never been this close to him. Zeki! I think he's waking up. Quick, let's get out of here before he sees us. Till the next adventure, remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Assalamu alaikum. Oh no! I'd better hurry up or I'll be late to the party! 
a honey cake without honey. Oh no! Oh, everyone was expecting me to have the honey cake at the party. Hmm, what can I do? Oh, I know. I'll go get some honey from Bilal's beehive. But this time, I'll ask him so he doesn't get angry with me. Bilal, are you there? Hmm, there's nobody in there. Masha'Allah, there's so much honey. I'm sure Bilal won't mind if I take some. Alhamdulillah, this honey is so good. Mm. Strange that Kazwa hasn't arrived yet. Yes, it's very odd. He's always on time. I'll go see if he's okay. One at a time, you cowards! Hmm, it seems strange that the window is closed. Could he be on his way already? Kazwa, is that you? What are you doing on the floor? Ugh, I was attacked. By who? I don't know. They attacked me in complete darkness. I'm guessing it was Bilal and all his friends. There were so many of them, coming at me from every angle. Hmm, I hear you Kaz. But I don't see anyone around here. They're probably waiting for me outside. You'll see. Why would Bilal come to your house to attack you? Um, well, I ran out of honey and went to ask Bilal for some, but he wasn't there. So I took the honey I needed for the cake. I spread the honey over the cake and left it on the window to cool down. And that's when Bilal came to attack me. And what happened next? I closed the window and hid. He must have entered through the door. Look, it's open. Kazwa, it was closed. I opened it. You must have dreamt the whole thing. It wasn't a dream, I'm sure. If not, then who hit me on the head? They're probably outside waiting for me. I told you he was angry. Let's run, fast.
All this running has made me so hungry. Tazwa, you ruined the cake. Just wait till we get to the party and then you can have some. Careful, Zeki! We need the cake to get there in one piece! Don't worry, Kazwa. I won't drop it. I hope. Well kids, once again, Kazwa has got us in trouble with Bilal. We'd better go. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others, especially bees. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bee in the garden. Buzzing around. There's a bee on the flower. Drinking the nectar. There's a bee flying home. Back to its hive. Another amazing creation of Allah. Bees make the honey. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. And it's good for your tummy. Subhanallah. Delicious and yummy. Alhamdulillah. Another amazing creation of Allah. Uh. This is life. Watch this, Kazwa. Feels so nice today. Come in, Kaz. Take a swim. Um, maybe later. I'm enjoying my drink now. Come on, Kazwa. It's fun.
see the dolphin swimming in the ocean I can see a stingray too There are so many beautiful things Just look around and you will see uh, do, do you think we've lost him? I think so. We swam quite a bit. I think he's still mad at me. That bee never forgets anything. Hurry up. Let's get back to my place before he sees us. Kazwa, what are you doing up in that tree? Uh, below the bees, down there. It's not the bee, it's a beetle. It, it doesn't matter. Let's run away fast before it feels like eating us. Zaki, look! It's below the bee! Oh no! Quick! Let's run faster! Well boys and girls, we gotta go now. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Assalamu alaikum! <laughs> Do, 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 do. Such a nice day. Huh? Oh, yummy, yummy honey. Bismillah. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So nice. Kazwa, swim over here. Come, let's hide behind these bushes. Oh, that bee is so nasty. Well, what did you do to make him so angry? Uh, uh, uh nothing. Kazwa, Bilal the bee doesn't just sting people for no reason. Well, well, well uh, I was just having a little bit of honey from the hive. Ha. <laughs> I knew it. Don't you know Bilal is very protective over his honey? It's better to ask him first. But that honey looks so delicious. You know what, Kazwa? Bees work very hard to make that honey. And in the process, they pollinate the plants so they can grow. Bees play a huge part in life on Earth. Yeah, I know. 
everything Allah has created is so amazing and perfect, like the mountains, rivers, plants and oceans. Just look around you and you will see. I can see the dolphins swimming in the ocean. I can see a stingray too. There are so many beautiful things. Just look around and you will see. I can see a frog jumping from a rock. I can see a dragonfly too. There are so many beautiful things Just look around and you will see I can see a bumblebee buzzing on a flower I can see a grasshopper too There are so many beautiful things Just look around and you will see I can see a turtle, I can see a cat I can see an octopus, I can see a bat I can see a tiger, I can see an egg I can see a spider hanging off a plant I can see a camel, I can see a bear I can see a lion, I can see a head I can see a butterfly, I can see a fox I can see a pelican, I can see an ox I can see the moon, I can see the stars I can see the raindrops falling from the clouds I can see the mountains high above the trees I can see the waterfall so beautiful to see I can see the rivers flowing nice and slow Lots and lots of fish swimming down below I can see a porcupine, I can see a duck I can see an elephant playing in the mud There are so many beautiful things Just look around and you will see Who made the lions? Allah! Who made the ants? Allah! Who made the pelicans? Allah! Who made the plants? Allah! Who made the bees? Allah! And all the trees? Allah! So many animals? Allah! That we can see? Allah! There are so many beautiful things Just look around and you will see Zeki, run for your life! I'll race you back to my place. Okay, but I don't think you will beat me. <laughs> well, boys and girls, we gotta go now. Remember, always be good to your parents and kind to others. Yeah, especially bees. <laughs> Just look around and you will see